And almost a year ago, August the 9th, and we said at the start of the programme, one of the first games was at Skelmersdale United in front of an official attendance of 99. And here we are in the sunshine in North London, 90,000 empty seats. It is an occasion that we will never forget, I suspect, uh, Chris Sutton, for this, which we hope is a, is a one-off. Yeah, absolutely right. Football is all about fans. And it's sad to see no fans in the stadium this afternoon, but there's still so much at stake. Two managers, two rookie managers, who I think have, have both impressed this season. There can only be one winner. Just waiting for referee Anthony Taylor. The first referee since... 1901, his first whistle is for everybody to take the knee in support of the Black Lives Movement. And then, of course, that's that second whistle start. But Anthony Taylor, first referee since 1901, since Arthur Kingscott to take charge of two FA Cup finals. Of course, he did referee when these two sides met in 2017. Arsenal, of course, won by two goals to one. But uh, again, that's due to the coronavirus because the FA didn't want the, uh, the referee to, uh, to miss out on that Wembley experience with not having his uh, his friends, family and friends able to turn up. So that's the reason why it's a, a break with tradition uh, for the first time in such a long time that a referee is taking charge of a second FA Cup final. So Anthony Taylor is the man in black out in the middle. And talking of uh, special occasions for Olivier Giroud and David Luiz, they join a small band of players now who've played for both in a specific final fixture. Francis Burley, Oxford University versus Wanderers, 1873. And then in the opposite fixture, vice versa, 1877. And Jack Reynolds, who did it for Aston Villa and West Brom in 1890. And Louise and Giroud, of course, are now who are on the opposing sides in 2017 making a small group of players. We welcome listeners to the BBC World Service. Wherever you are, welcome to Wembley Stadium here in North London. We are underway with Chelsea in their royal blue shirts and shorts and white socks playing from left to right against Arsenal in their red and whites. And just to say, Ireland finished 212 for nine. So England required 213 to win in that second one-day international at Southampton. And that, of course, commentary continues on Five Live Sports Extra. So we've gone through the two teams. They're both playing with uh, with three at the back. And let's just see how how well matched up these two sides are, Chris Sutton. Yeah, absolutely. I don't think any surprise with the way both sides have set out once we saw the team sheets. You could say they're both the 3-4-3 three, three formation. I was going to ask you, Denno, whether there are any other referees who had uh, refereed the FA Cup final before 1901 twice. I think I'm right in saying he's the eighth referee in total. To, uh, to have done it, but uh, your man Arthur Kingscott, who used to end, end, he ended up being a treasurer for the FA, actually did it three times. He did the replay as a cross comes in from the left hand side, and the header from on that far on this near side, it was uh, Obama Yang who climbed at the near post and just flashed his header wide. Good ball in from the left. Yes, Maitland Niles in that left wing back position. Uh, as Pilaqueta drawn out wide, Maitland Niles. On, nearly on the byline, and he chops back. As Belaqueta thought the ball had gone out and switched off, and the cross went in. Not a great deal of pace on the cross, and Abamian gets across his marker. Can't generate enough pace and direction on the ball to get it on target. But the first chance to Arsenal. Rudiger inside his penalty area, back to Caballero. The sun into his eyes, all in grey, away towards our left hand side. Giroud lays it off, played the ball forward, then towards Mount, loses it. Louise is there. Xhaka inside the centre circle, comes under pressure. It's taken off his toes, dispossessed, and then all of a sudden produces a flying save. Does Mount from Martinez, just moving away towards his left. He was easily dispossessed from Xhaka. It was a comfortable height, though, for the keeper, but it's been a good, entertaining opening three minutes. Absolutely has, and Xhaka just dallied on the ball. Mount came on his blind side, pinched it off him. And drives with the ball 25 yards out, just trying to bend it right-footed into the corner of the Arsenal goal. And Martinez, flying save to his left-hand side, gets it round the post. He's done well since uh, he's come into the side. He started the last 10 games, four clean sheets in that period as the corner is taken short on the right-hand side. It's back to Rhys James. In it comes first time, headed up by holding and not away. Not a telling touch, really, by Alonso on that far side of the penalty area, won back by Kovacic. 
He was uh, looking for a Chelsea throw, but it's going to go to uh, Arsenal over on that far side. So opportunities at either end in the opening few minutes, Chris. Yeah, and as Aubameyang, who smuggled the ball clear for Arsenal, as an Arsenal throw in, Alonso, I think, could have been braver as the ball dropped on the fast po far post. Chris Sutton with us here on BBC Radio 5 Live. We've got Dion Dublin pitch side as well as uh, Arsenal playing from right to left, nil-nil, ball hit early up towards uh, Aubameyang from Lacazette, but just shuffling across with Zuma and tidies it back for uh, for Caballero. Caballero starting back-to-back -back matches, did have that run of six games in uh, in February, uh, looking to build out from the back are Chelsea, here is Giroud in the centre circle, pops it quite high, back towards Jorginho in the centre circle, able to come forward, and now the ball is up towards Mason Mount inside the penalty area. It might fall to Giroud, he lays it off. Pulisic is here and Pulisic scores. Very well worked goal from Chelsea and inside five minutes it is Chelsea who score first. Composed six yards out. But it was the assist from Giroud and Christian Pulisic, only the third American to play in an FA Cup final, scores early and Chelsea take the lead 1-0. Yeah, American dream for Pulisic that's really well worked again. Mount, an integral part of the move. Left-hand side of the box, pulls the ball back. We spoke before the programme about Giroud, what he brings to this Chelsea team. It's a wonderful touch with the outside of his boot into Pulisic's path. He's on the penalty spot and he takes a lovely first touch past Tierney and just lifts the ball over the onrushing goalkeeper. What a start for Chelsea. Brilliant finish, composed. The awareness of Giroud, but also the close control of Pulisic. He had to get it out from underneath his feet whilst he was on the run. As Chelsea lead by a goal to nil. And all of a sudden, Arsenal go for an early repost, but the shot from Pepe in a quite central area from his left foot was saved by Caballero. We saw, with the goal, we saw the touch from Giroud and Tierney just actually let Pulisic run past him, hands in the air, didn't want to bring him down. There's a wonderful touch and a really composed finish. Had a little look, Martinez rushing out and just lifted the ball over him. What a start for Chelsea. It's his 11th goal. It's his best scoring uh, of the season. It's his best scoring season of his career, but he's a player who you just think is going to get better and better for uh, from a Chelsea point of view. Leading by a goal to nil, as Pilaqueta on this near side. Hit early by Jorginho, loops up in the air. Maitland-Niles will bring it under control, and he goes all the way back to uh, to Martinez. Goalkeeper wearing a dark, short-sleeved goalkeeper's jersey away towards our right-hand side. Louise, right, uh, left corner of the penalty area, back towards the Argentine, plays it forward. Sabias has dropped deep inside his own penalty area. Chelsea are pressing. Arsenal will try and beat that press over on that far side, but the blue shirts are high up the pitch, forced it back towards the Arsenal goalkeeper. Doesn't panic, though. Along towards Louise, who now run forward with that frizzy hair of his for the Brazilian and then he chips it forward and then it's easily under control by Azpilicueta who plays it forward and then Kovacic on the halfway line back towards Zuma and Zuma spreads play quite taken high on the chest by Alonso plays it back and Chelsea leading by a goal to nil have made a very confident start Chris Sutton no, they have a telling start from Chelsea out of the traps played with real intensity wonderfully works goal and Arsenal just need to hang on in there at the moment. It shell shocked the Gunners. Here is Ceballos, collects the ball just in front of his own penalty area. Again, because of Chelsea's press, Arsenal don't look at, uh, very comfortable at the minute. They're struggling to get past that press. We, we saw this against Manchester City in the semi-final. Arsenal played the same way and you kept thinking they're going to give a goal away. They actually went up the other end and scored. So persistence paid off in the semi-final will it pay off in the final but it's really all been Chelsea Pula six goal an early goal gives Chelsea the advantage the other two before him for the Americans to play in a cup final Tim Howard and uh, and John Harkes Frank Lampard looking animated in his technical area moving around waving his right hand all over the place his right arm as then it's with Kovacic out towards that far side Back goes uh, Kovacic once again from Rudiger. Mount has made that run forward. 
but it was Tierney who tracked him and it runs all the way out for uh, for a goal kick. But Arsenal at the minute, after that early opportunity they had with Aubameyang's mm. header, been shell-shocked a little bit by that Chelsea goal. No, it has, and with you know, Mason Mount has really the last few weeks, he had a little dip, I think, earlier on in the season, started the season so well, but what a season overall he has had. And we talked about Frank Lampard, and what he had to work with this season. He's really given younger players an opportunity and has paid dividends. Now it has been a revelation. Here is Kovacic in the sunshine, out to Alonso on that far side to left. Chelsea play from left to right on BBC Radio 5 Live and the World Service here at Wembley Stadium. Back to Rudiger on the halfway line. I think both managers actually have got a number of players, English talent, youngsters coming through that will probably serve Gareth Southgate well over the next few seasons. Mount certainly has already had that opportunity. Here's another one, Rhys James, who will be looking to try and force his way into that squad of Gareth Southgate as the Jorginho slides it along the ground, taken well by Pulisic, running and gliding across the surface. into the penalty area, shot beaten down by the goalkeeper, Martinez, and then he gathers it in. But Pulisic, lovely play again. Lovely balance and drive from Pulisic. Decent shot. Martinez dives to his right-hand side, parries the ball and makes a save at the second attempt. What they're doing, Chelsea, with the Arsenal three at the back, they're playing Pulisic and Mount really narrow, so they're three on three, they're getting close to Giroud, and Arsenal cannot cope. They've hit the ball long, Arsenal, Maitland-Niles in a foot chase with James, James got goal side, held him up, Maitland-Niles, though, has still battled away, he's been supported now by Aubameyang, who then with the attempted cross was... Uh, caught Jorginho right in between the legs he's wincing at the minute Arsenal are still attacking over on that far side played then towards Pepe cuts over the cross stretching to head the ball behind then was was Zuma oh, it was well worked from Arsenal patient got the ball out to the right hand side and Zuma right place at the right time the middle of his goal headed the ball behind Jorginho has taken a sore one Earlier on, though, we had the, the penetration from Pulisic, but then we had the poise. When he's in full flight, he's a um, very, very good player, Christian Pulisic. His goal is the uh, the early difference here at Wembley, as Arsenal have the corner kick. Jorginho, eyes watering, is able to continue. He's back onto his, uh, his feet. Corner on that far side. Louise looking to make a late run into the penalty area. It's delivered towards the far post, but delivered far too deep and out of play it will go for a goal kick it ran out by the uh, the corner flag that's how deep it was as Chelsea lead by a goal to nil Chris Sutton oh, what a dreadful corner that is from Pepe must have overhit that by the best part of 15-20 yards We've seen Mikel Arteta working his technical area he'll be really furious with the start Chelsea have come out of the traps Arsenal haven't Ball played forward by Azpilicueta. Here is Louise on the halfway line. Just touched there by uh, by Giroud. Just wouldn't fall to uh, to Pulisic. And then there's a late barge in the back on Jorginho. The referee Anthony Taylor has let that one go. And Chelsea keep the ball at the back. Zuma playing in the heart of that three. Azpilicueta to his right. Forward to Jorginho under pressure. But again, little touch from Kovacic. And he takes out Sabias with that first touch to run forward into space. And they've got a man over on this near side, the right, which is James. And then it's back towards Mount. Kovacic will play it forward. Again, it gets it back from Jorginho. The two continue to exchange passes. They're midway through the Arsenal half as Chelsea attack from left to right, leading by a goal to nil. Kovacic comes forward away from Aubameyang. Little touch there by Pulisic gives the ball away and Arsenal now can come forward. And this was Xhaka, who's had a bit of a renaissance under Mikel Arteta, Ceballos. Because of the attentions of Jorginho, has to turn, track back and then play a diagonal ball out towards the right-hand side that is intercepted. Alonso, Kovacic almost at walking pace turns and finds Jorginho. They look very assured, Chelsea. Yeah, they absolutely do. And when they get in possession of the ball, as Kovacic gives that away, and you may see the first yellow card here, he just dallied on the ball and took a heavy touch and... Xhaka came in, pitched it off him, and he, he goes into Xhaka strongly. I don't know whether we will see a yellow card. He'll be fortunate to get away with that, Kovacic. And just when we said that it was a short, it ran away from him, and he was late. He, uh, he caught Xhaka. There is, of course, uh, VAR. Stuart Atwell is the, uh, the VAR official. 
but as yet he's yet to reach for a card at all Anthony Taylor he got it ready there it is it's yes. a yellow so Kovacic is the uh, the first player to be booked after 14 minutes as Chelsea lead by uh, by a goal to nil he likes to tackle as well doesn't he likes to get stuck in he's been good in a Chelsea shirt this season puts himself under pressure now Looking to add to the seven trophies that he won at, uh, at Real Madrid as Ceballos floats the free kick forward, headed away by Alonso, played in by Holding, cleared then by Jorginho inside the penalty area. Maitland-Niles out to Luiz on this near side. David Luiz will go all the way then back towards the halfway line, just touched forward by Tierney. Ceballos will carry the ball forward, finds Aubameyang. Ceballos once again coming forward still, but in the end he's just crowded out by the blue but in fact he was fouled by I think it might have been Kovacic again free kick central position about what 30 yards from goal maybe just a shade under mm. dancing feet wasn't it really good from Ceballos went past Kovacic who had a nibble and this is an opportunity for Arsenal within range really terrific feet he draws the foul in fact I think it was Jorginho who gave away the foul but David Luiz. Well, you've seen the him ball, score yes. from here before, haven't you? It's that sort of range for him to uh, to let one fly with a pile driver from the uh, from the Brazilian. He's got that strange technique, hasn't he? He almost side foots the ball, straight run up and side foots the ball. But there are others over the ball as well. Pepe, Pepe and Ceballos are the other two. Luiz now walks away. It is central though. It's just a shade under 30 yards out from goal. Caballero, not sporting a cap, would be looking into the sun. So Luis has walked away. Ceballos is there. Pepe doesn't have much of a uh, of a run-up, although now Pepe walks away. It is Ceballos right-footed, and it's just over the crossbar. Whistles over the top. Goal kick. Chelsea still lead 1-0. Yeah, can't get the dip with it. Ceballos gets it up and over the wall. And pretty central really Cavalero had that well covered goes over his head disappointing I have to say should have let Louise take it Arsenal are attacking that end of the ground where the seat wraps over the lower sections of that bottom tier have the uh, the years and the red and white of the times that Arsenal have won the, uh, the FA Cup 2017, 2015 2014 and so on They've won the FA Cup more times than any other side. They're looking to try and do it for a 14th occasion. However, they're going to have to do what it also says behind that goal, that motto. And at the heart of it, where it says believe, is a yellow ribbon. In fact, John Murray alerted me to this earlier. There are yellow ribbons tied around the poles at that end of the ground because, of course, after the, the Arsenal supporters song where they would often sing, she wore a yellow ribbon. They do have to believe. They're a goal down. As uh, they're seeing a lot more of the ball now are Arsenal. Ceballos goes out towards that far side for uh, for Holding. Plays it forward. Beirin back with Ceballos once again. Switches play to Tierney. We've been playing for just over 17 minutes on BBC Radio 5 Live in the World Service. And Chelsea lead by a goal to nil. Aubameyang to Tierney. Had to get rid of it quickly. He's been closed down by Mount. And now it's with uh, Luiz to, uh, to Martinez. Who in the, uh, the build-up spoke to our producer Gary Flintoff ahead of this game and Gary was saying that one of the key things that struck him was his humility what was it six loans he's had uh, away from uh, from the club to gain his experience had to bide his time he's been talked up about uh, placing the national side as well Martinez but he's been beaten already today as uh, almost Pepe running himself into trouble on the edge of the penalty area back with Louise but also Martinez talked about his family and how much they've helped him during his career Unable to be here today, they've had to have a strict protocol as Maitland-Niles bursts forward from the left-hand side. Left of the penalty area now, Maitland-Niles, though, shows too much to Azpilicueta and as he drops to his knees, Azpilicueta just sees the ball behind safely for a goal kick. Yeah, half a chance, that. Up, back and through for Arsenal. Maitland-Niles gets him behind Azpilicueta. Azpilicueta gets back and uses his body well and ushers the ball out behind for a Chelsea goal kick but it shows Chelsea's intent early on we saw Nicolas Pepe take a heavy touch inside or on the edge of his own box and 
Rudiger right with him, the Chelsea centre half. They're getting after Arsenal by Chelsea. I always think of uh, Mike Ingham, our former football correspondent on the cup final day. He uh, always used to cherish this day more than uh, the most. Spoke to him uh, during the week and he said, you're going to be commentating on a final like no other. And you think the restricted numbers, 10 places for non-playing staff, 20 places each for the executives in the, in the Royal Box. It uh, is certainly a unique occasion here at Wembley where Chelsea are leading by a goal to nil. I'm sure Mike will be listening to Five Live this afternoon as well. And very, very soon, he'll be handing to his successor, John Murray, to take over here at Wembley. We've got Dion Dublin pitch side as well, getting a close-up view of Chelsea attacking now. That's the end that Dion's actually in, the half, which is the right of the halfway line, as Chelsea play from left to right, leading by a goal to nil. Very few scares for Chelsea since they took that early lead through Pulisic. Alice Pelliquet is over the halfway line. His left-footed ball headed away by Holding in the bright sunshine. Ceballos back to the former Bolton player who then plays it out to Bearing on that far side. And then Arsenal are forced to go back and that's down to Chelsea. Chelsea's work off the ball is not... They can't seem to get past the press at the minute, Chris Sutton. No, they can't playing with great intensity. Chelsea really getting after Arsenal. Arsenal looking for that outlet. They nearly got it with Aubameyang making a run in behind the high line of the Chelsea defence. Little impact so far. Aubameyang had that early opportunity. He couldn't quite get on target. Not enough pace on the cross. And I suppose the question is, is this Aubameyang's last game for Arsenal? Well, if it is, he'll certainly want to go out on a high. They're hoping that his success here might be able to persuade him to stay. They'd certainly miss him. Aubameyang, the first player for Arsenal since Robin van Persie to score 20-plus goals in consecutive seasons. They would miss that regular ability, proven goal scorer, as has been the case for Aubameyang in his career. They need him at the minute. They need Lacazette, who's actually yet to score in the uh, in any of his previous five FA Cup appearances. Well, well, has he had a touch? I don't think he has. And when you think that, that Chelsea have had success with that ball into Giroud and the, and the two players, Mount and Pulisic, getting close to him, that's been the difference. The Chelsea front three, if you like, Arsenal just haven't got going yet. Well, we've got an early drinks break, 21 minutes played. Let's get the thoughts of, uh, of Dion. What do you think Dion pitch side? Chelsea have been outstanding, I've got to say, they've kept the ball so well. The, the, the communication, when you're down here pitch you can hear all the communication, thanks, telling them instructions. Mikel Arteta speaking to David Luiz constantly about how high he wants the line. Um, the, the, the interesting thing was, before they scored the goal, Chelsea, Mason Mount had a shot on goal, he should have put uh, Giroud in. Giroud had a word with him, the second chance, he passed the ball to Giroud, Giroud dropped it off to Pulisic and what a very cultured finish. Very good game, Arsenal are coming back into it. That's the thoughts of Dion Dublin, the drinks break is over. If you'd have been listening to Five Live Sport with Mark Chapman at the start of uh, midday, you'd have realised that our correspondent was slightly uh, delayed due to a, a change of shift uh, as he made his way through the medical screening here at Wembley Stadium. So it's only apt that we have a change of shift now, midway through the first half. And here is the aforementioned correspondent, John Murray. Thank you, Ian. Didn't think you'd let that lie. So uh, here we are then. FA Cup final 2020. Arsenal nil, Chelsea one. And uh, Chris, I agree with Ian. I hope very much that what we're seeing here is a one-off and that we never have to watch an FA Cup final behind closed doors again. <laughs> it is a surreal experience, um, the latest of, of many that we've been having over the course of the last few weeks and months or so. But Chelsea have done well so far, a very good, very nicely worked goal, as Dion Dublin was, was saying. Dion's very much socially distanced down there on the side of the pitch, no one anywhere near him. And the ball's played in by Tierney for Arsenal. Here is Lacazette getting a, a rare touch in the cup final so far. Lacazette tried to turn it out to Aubameyang here on the, on the Arsenal left, but it was blocked, and Chelsea have the ball with Mount, who actually couldn't keep it in, so it's a... Throw into Arsenal inside the Chelsea half, actually thrown back into the uh, the Arsenal territory. So Ceballos, both clubs wearing their new kits for next season, and uh, and Arsenal, their numbers on the back have sort of got a gothic touch to them. 
which is very unusual. The white numbers on the backs of the red shirts, white sleeves, of course. David Luiz in possession, and the ball played across the back line to Rob Holding, who I remember played in the uh, previous FA Cup final between these sides back in 2017, when Arsenal scored early through Sanchez, you might remember, and went on to win 2-1. That goal from Sanchez in the fourth minute. Chelsea scored in the fifth minute of this meeting, the third meeting in an FA Cup final between these two clubs. Uh, ball turned by Maitland Niles into the middle. Aubameyang clears the cross. Pepe's left foot shot flies into the top corner. But the referee says there was an offside. The flag is up on the far side. Anthony Taylor's whistle went, and Pepe's wonderfully struck goal is ruled out. Well, the flag went up early they will be checking this what a finish it was from Pepe just watching yes there was an offside as the ball went in I think it was to Maitland Niles who had made a run just beyond the Chelsea back line and he laid the ball back at Pepe from what 22 yards postage stamp into the top corner Arsenal will feel so, so unlucky. But we've seen after the drinks break, Arsenal have actually started to turn up in this game. What an absolute sickener that is for Pepe to score a goal like that, or to, to hit a shot like that that ends up in the back of the net. And the goal is ruled out, but Aubameyang has got away from Aspilicueta, who recovers, and he brought him down, and it's a penalty to Arsenal. And will this be a red card for Aspilicueta? Anthony Taylor dips into his pocket it's a yellow well Chelsea had Victor Moses sent off in the previous cup final between these two I thought for a moment that was going to be a red card for the Chelsea captain it's only a yellow but it is a penalty for Arsenal well highly contentious one ball did for Chelsea they mentioned Arsenal's intensity after the drinks break there is a little pull I think Aubameyang knows exactly what he's doing here he feels Aspilicueta who's too keen to get back there's a little tug on the jersey. I think Aubameyang actually plays for that, dare I say it. I think he's brought that penalty, I really do. There's the slightest contact there. But Aubameyang goes down, I think, too easily there. there he really does. There's enough though, Chris, isn't there? He fit, you know, his there, arms on his there shoulder. Is enough for him to go down like, like that? that? At running at so pace, sure. running at pace. I have to say... Aspilicueta so sure. is uh, is contesting this. Obviously, VAR are having a look at this, and uh, the decision is there is contact, but is there enough contact for him to fall in that manner? He feels Aspilicueta. I think he I think he, he knows exactly what he's doing there, Abamyang. I, I think he throws himself to the floor, John. I think that Stuart Atwell. That's harsh. The video assistant referee has backed up Anthony Taylor's well, as they decision. Do. You, do you know what? I think the decision is penalty. So Pierre Emmerich Aubameyang has got the ball, having won the penalty. Chelsea disputed it. Cesar Aspilicueta uh, uh, lengthily with the referee. But in the uh, end to our left, Pierre Emmerich Aubameyang has the chance to make it 1-1 from the penalty spot. So much of the talk before this final centred around the Arsenal captain, 31 years old, whether this might be his final appearance in an Arsenal shirt. Well, he has a chance here from the spot in the FA Cup final to mark it with a goal. He walks away, backs away to the edge of the penalty area. Caballero on the line, all in grey. He saved penalties at Wembley before, you know. Aubameyang steps out to his left and right-footed sends Caballero the wrong way. The ball is in the back of the Chelsea net. And with almost half an hour played, it's Arsenal 1, Chelsea 1. Didn't expect anything else, Caballero. Very good at saving penalties, not here though. Stands straight to the ball, little skip to his left-hand side. Strolls up and sends Caballero the wrong way. He dives to his right, the ball goes left. I have to say, John, I think Arsenal very, very fortunate with the penalty award. I think, that, uh, I think that's a classic example of what I expect we'll see next season with VAR when there's a change in terms of the administration. 
in that I would expect that the referee there would be called to come and have a look at it on the side well, of the pitch. Absolutely. Well, why not go and look at the monitor anyway, make the well, decision exactly. himself. It wasn't a quick decision, John. So they were obviously thinking about it. They were. It's, uh, it'll provoke debate, I'm sure, for you and Ali Bruce Ball on 6 or 6 tonight. Oh, little Bruce, and we have the simulation game. You do? I thought Aubameyang went down too easily, dare I say it. I thought he dived. They're running at pace together into the penalty area. Aubameyang's, the, there's a player down, actually, so we've just got Giroud a stoppage got here. A knee. He's got a um, knee in the back. Yeah, and uh, it'll take a little while to receive some treatment for this. So for the for the penalty, Aubameyang got on the wrong side of Aspilicueta, ran away from him. Aspilicueta scrambling. There was an arm on the shoulder. They were falling into the penalty area. Down he went. Not enough for you, Chris, no. for a penalty. Uh, look, in real time, I understood why the referee gave it but then the fact there was a delay and you watch it back on the monitor did Abamyang have to go down he absolutely didn't he bought that penalty Miguel Arteta will say good play it was a penalty I have to say I thought Azpilicueta was too keen to get back and there, there, there was slight contact but not enough to fall like that John Giroud is uh, back on his feet, he's having his lower back rubbed, he's off the field at the moment, so Chelsea playing with ten men. This is Five Live and the World Service from the BBC. If you're out and about, uh, if you're on your way home, the match is live on BBC One right now, and uh, you can watch it there on the iPlayer, the BBC Sport website, and on your red button there are various options that you will find, including carrying on watching while listening to our five live commentary. So take your pick. But it is 1-1 after Christian Pulisic's very good early goal. Lovely combination between Mount and Giroud. The little layoff from Giroud into the pass of Pulisic. But Pulisic still completed a lovely finish. That was the opening goal, but Aubameyang equalising. But Chelsea coming again. The ball with a weaving run by Pulisic to the edge of the area but it judged to have just caught. That's a nod decision it as was, well, wasn't, wasn't it? it? Yeah. That was it in full flight. I'll tell you what's interesting, John, the drinks break. Chelsea so dominant, and we saw Mikel Arteta really animated with his players, got a response. And now they have been the better team, Arsenal. I think there was, I think it was Alonso who was a judge to have caught Ceballos on the edge of the area, off the ball. That's why the free kick was given to Arsenal there on the edge of their own box. Giroud is back on the field, isn't he? Yes, there he is. Down. And now Aspilicueta's gone down on the edge of the Chelsea penalty area. So 1-1 uh, the score, Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang. We saw him, Chris, didn't we? Aubameyang score both goals in the semi-final yeah. against Manchester City. Now he's got one in the final, 28 for the season. And while Aspilicueta is being looked at, let's get an update from uh, Southampton, from the second one-day international there, from Nikesh Rugani. Yes, England uh, have just got their chase underway. They need 213 to win, but have already lost a wicket, just three balls into their innings. Jason Roy hitting one straight to Graham Delaney in the covers off the bowling of Young. So he's gone for a duck in England, not for one. Aspilicueta still receiving treatment there. He's been rolled onto his side. Did you see what happened to him, Chris? I didn't. It's, it's a worrying one, that. Is he holding that? Is he holding his buttock? Can you say that, John? I think you can say that, yes. And did he just pull up? Mm. We're just watching a replay, I think. Uh, and he's got his hand on his. At the top of the, top top of the hamstring? Or? I think it might be. I think this, this could be the end of it for the Chelsea captain. The very, very rarely injured Chelsea captain. Mm, that's that's a stretcher worry. coming on. Christensen warming up. The, the obvious replacement. Well, and he'll be disappointed, John, because, of course, say, giving away the penalty, I don't think it was a penalty, but he's the type of player who would have loved to make amends, and he seems to be in a fair bit of distress down there, doesn't he? He is, and uh, obviously this is a serious blow for Chelsea to lose their captain, the steadiest of Eddie's, his 386th Chelsea appearance. It's remarkable if you look back how rarely he's missed matches. Just, just watching the penalty incident again. That's not, it's not a penalty. There's contact from outside the box, if there is any contact at all. And then he's hardly touching Abamyang. Abamyang knows what he's doing, gets his body in, and falls to the floor. That is called John Murray simulation. Yeah, come on, let's take the game. It's a penalty though, and VAR looked at it. 
and decided... Well, see, but they've been doing it all season. Just Let's just back the on-field referee blindly. Let's not tell him to look at the monitor. We'll make a mess of it at Stockley Park. Aspilicueta is back on his feet. And uh, he's not played Christian to he, he is not carrying on. That's going to be the end of it. So that's a, a really bad five, six, seven minutes or so for Chelsea. 1-0 up in the cup final. And then Aspilicueta uh, concedes a penalty in the way that he did. And now the uh, Chelsea captain, who's almost, he's almost inconsolable down there, walking, limping off the tears. field. I think we saw Thierry, yeah, there are tears. That tells you what it means to him. There'll be that frustration from the award of the penalty. And as I said, he's the type of player so gutsy, would want to make amends and put things right. And now he doesn't have the opportunity. It's sad, sad to see. It is. So Aspilicueta is substituted. And nice touch in. from Arteta there, John. Oh, did he give him a little, yeah, uh, little hug? Little, that's nice. Just as he walked past the Arsenal coach. And then uh, he's shepherded away and he'll disappear down the tunnel. So, step forward, Andreas Christensen, who's been an unused substitute in the last four matches, and now enters the field in the FA Cup final to take over in Chelsea's three-man back line. And uh, he, he's gone centrally, John, with Zuma now out on the right-hand side, and I, I suppose Frank may feel that Zuma may have the pace to deal with the Bamiang, but not many do. Caballero... Chelsea's 38-year-old goalkeeper clears this out down the middle. Chelsea on the left-hand side. Here's Alonso. Alonso stabs it forward. Now they run into the penalty area. Pulisic is there. Pulisic back onto his right foot. Lots of Arsenal bodies. Lays it back to the edge of the area. And then two Chelsea players arriving at the same time. Alonso, I think, impeded Jorginho, who just lifted his shot high over the crossbar from the edge of the box. A good run from Mount in the side of the box kept the ball well inside the box got his head up he saw Jorginho and he pulled the ball back and Alonso made a mess of that got in his way it was a horrible finish scooped over the bar from 18 yards Jorginho who scored in both games against Arsenal this season for Chelsea and uh, was chosen ahead of Kante to play and start in the cup final even though Kante is fit again having missed the last six matches but he is on the bench Arsenal 1 Chelsea 1 BBC Radio 5 live and the World Service live from inside Wembley Stadium the sun is shining on what is the, the latest the cup final the FA Cup final has ever been played in the year strangely enough Chelsea also played in the earliest the FA Cup final was ever played in a season that was in the uh, in the famous 1970 original match, the cup final, Chelsea against Leeds United. And this is the 50th anniversary of Chelsea winning the FA Cup then for the first time. Here's Tierney. Tierney away down the left-hand side for Arsenal. Looks up, plays an early one across towards Pepe. Brings the ball down on the edge of the area. Alonso quickly into the challenge. The ball, however, has run to Bellerin. And then Pepe. Pepe stabbed it across the box, but played it straight at a Chelsea defender and they were able to clear the ball away and now it's being brought up to the halfway line for Chelsea Pulisic in possession the ball played to the right hand side here to James and then James turns and plays it back into his own half promising there for Arsenal but it came to nothing still 1-1 the score seven minutes to go to half time more from Chris Sutton in a moment and from Dion Dublin too who'll we'll hear from at half time Frank Lampard comes to the edge of his coaching area just a few yards away from Mikel Arteta to his left these two both in their first season as Premier League manager, managers or Premier League head coaches as they would call although you will remember that Frank Lampard ended last season at Derby losing here at Wembley in the playoff final ball played back by Maitland Niles to goalkeeper Martinez who puts his foot on it gives it out to Maitland Niles in the left back position who passes it in field Arsenal playing it out from the back this is uh, the stated ambition and aim of the pupil of Guardiola Mikel Arteta and uh, Pepe loses it halfway inside his own half so Chelsea have got it back tried to play one touch there Pepe that actually worked the ball okay but he has to be more secure in possession you can't be loose and he was loose now Chelsea have the ball back making a few passes in the Arsenal half uh, Chelsea here's Christensen the substitute turning to his right and giving it to 
Zuma, who's moved across to the right-hand side of the the three Chelsea central defenders. Rhys James playing in a, a cup final at the end of his first season in the really big time. And he's taken to it like a duck to water. Chelsea's right wing back as he is in this game. Christiansen turns, plays it all the way back to the shaven headed Caballero. Poor clearance. Straight to the Arsenal goal scorer, Aubameyang. And Aubameyang now curls a pass. Oh, only half cleared by Rudiger. He's given it straight to Pepe. Pepe takes it out into the fullback position. Bellerin's getting involved out there as well. And Ceballos. Back it goes to Pepe. Pepe onto his left foot. Here's the cross deep towards Aubameyang. Headed back across the edge of the six yard box. Lacazette can't get there. It was headed away by Christian uh, by Christensen and Chelsea will run it away. Although Mason Mount rather comically turns and gives the ball away. So Arsenal have got a second chance with this latest attack. Chaka back to holding near the centre circle. And then Ceballos with that heavily greased black hair swept and tied back. Now uh, David Luiz distinctly ungreased. Shaka in with the challenge. Now Arsenal coming forward with Bellerin. Chaka square towards Ceballos who allowed the ball to run across him because he knew that Giroud was coming. And Ceballos then challenged by Giroud, towers over Ceballos. Arsenal have got it again in the centre circle. Into the first, into the last five minutes of the first half, plus plenty of added time for the various stoppages. Ceballos on the left wing he is now, the Spaniard, the uh, on loan Real Madrid man, as he is currently. He has Tierney. Tierney then goes for a high ball over the top, down the left-hand side. Maitland-Niles gets it down away from James. His cross whipped over, and it's reached Pepe in the left full-back position. Pepe to Bellerin. Bellerin plays it around Alonso. Uh, Bellerin now near the corner flag on the right-hand side, uses Pepe, corner of the box. Pepe cross to the back post. Maitland-Niles was there, but couldn't get a header on target. But I think the referee says that it came off James, who was there with Maitland-Niles. And it will be... Or did Caballero get a touch? He might yeah, have done. It's a corner. It right fingertip to it but now it's the Arsenal wing-backs pushing back the Chelsea wing-backs lovely ball from Tierney initially flashing cross from Maitland-Niles comes out right again a decent ball in corner taken short this time it's uh, then whipped into the back post by the original corner taker Ceballos headed away for Chelsea Alonso in danger of losing it on the edge of his own box it falls to Pepe with a shot from the angle quickly charged down though by Christensen ball still inside the Chelsea area this is good Arsenal pressure 1-0 down early in the cup final but 1-1 now and the ball is played forward via a deflection it runs behind for another Arsenal corner Chelsea cannot get up the pitch at the moment and sloppy play from Alonso Gave the ball away on the edge of his own box. It's all Arsenal coming into half-time. What a response from Arsenal. Terrible defending from Alonso. Yeah, there were uh, there were signs for Arsenal, weren't there, before the drinks break. Corner's taken short, Pepe gets it back, plays it into the back post. And I think that's come off a, the head of Jorginho, who was backing away. He knew Aubameyang was behind him, so it's another corner, second consecutive corner for Arsenal this one from the left hand side I think there were signs that they were just beginning to come back into it before the drinks break but since the drinks break Arsenal have won the controversial penalty corner taken short Ceballos gets it back it's headed back towards the edge of the penalty area Pepe is onto it holding is there as well turns and plays the ball straight into the path of Kovacic who will run it away for Chelsea Jorginho allows the ball to, to run jumped over it actually and ran into the path of Alonso who will turn and give it back to the, uh, the central defender Rudiger yes uh, Azpilicueta conceding the penalty that went to VAR not too much contact question is whether there was enough Chris Sutton no. certainly feels there wasn't oh. you can talk about it on 606 with Pru Chris and Alistair Bruce Ball later as soon as we wrap things up here at Wembley but Arsenal coming again Bellerin's got involved in the attack manages to work it across against Rudiger but I think the ball might have already been over the line and it's a goal kick to Chelsea 1-1 on five live in the world service yeah, staggering from Chelsea really the contrast with the display early on in the half they've, they've really lost their composure where they were popping the ball around the back at will and nicely getting up the pitch not now giving away again yeah Chelsea's goal scorer Pulisic caught in possession now Pepe to the edge of the area running weaving one way then the other challenge right on the edge of the box and referee Taylor says free kick it was just outside 
He's got great feet, hasn't he, Pepe? I know a lot of Arsenal fans were concerned about him at the start of the season. Big price tag, but he does have that ability to go past players. I think there was contact there from Christiansen, edge of the box. Just stepped in. Yeah, yeah, there was. It was a foot outside, yeah. a foot outside the box. What a chance here, though, John. Very close. As I say, it is a matter of inches outside the penalty area. David Luiz is towering over both Lacazette and uh, Pepe, who's hidden from our view at the moment. Uh, Ceballos, who's already had one goal, has been sent away. Aubameyang is there as well. This is Lacazette, isn't it? It looks like Lacazette. There's a few having words, but Lacazette looks really focused on this. He's barely touched the ball in this first half. We're in the 45th minute. The FA Cup final here at Wembley, behind closed doors. 1-1. And Pepe to the right of the ball. Lacazette to the left. The whistle goes. Up comes Lacazette and curls it beyond the wall, but beyond the far post as well. And it's a goal kick with the score 1-1. Mikel Arteta right behind that in his technical area. Hands on head. Lacazette goes goalkeeper side. Goes around the wall. Tries to catch Caballero out. He's read that well, the Chelsea goalkeeper. Goes two, three yards wide of the left-hand post. Five minutes of added time. Lovely use, Chris, of the phrase right behind that. As Jimmy Armfield always used to say, I was right behind that. He loved the FA Cup and the FA Cup final. Jimmy, much missed. And here is Ceballos inside the Arsenal half. Just rolling a ball to Bellerin in his orange boots on the right-hand side. And then Pepe, the challenge from Jorginho, just a little heavy. And Chelsea have really been knocked out of their stride here after starting so promisingly and scoring a lovely goal. I enjoyed that, Chris, the American dream. You labelled it, Pulisic's uh, excellent finish. I'm not sure how many Americans do dream of scoring a goal in the FA Cup final, but he, uh, he's got one. And Martinez sending a long ball over the top for uh, Zuma to take down and see back to Caballero, who had to be quick there against Aubameyang, but he, he was. He was. he was thinking about it, wasn't he? Yes, he was. He was thinking about the old Cruyff turn, but <laughs> decided... Trove turns, trove turns at 38. Well, they still work at 38. Do they? Maybe not with a Bamiang bearing down on you. No. Good decision in the end. Very good decision. Pulisic now uh, back in field towards Kovacic. And Chelsea start again from the back with Christensen. Now Zuma forward towards James. Maitland-Niles again very quickly on, on Rhys James when he's in possession. They don't want him marauding forward. And Maitland-Niles, who played such an important role in that excellent Arsenal team performance against Manchester City in the uh, FA Cup semi-final here at defensive display. Uh, so he was linked with Brighton. Yes, that's right. John, once, once more football, I get that, but he's such an important player for Arsenal, so versatile, plays a number of positions, but plays them so, so well. I'd be surprised if I let him go. Wants to play more, though, don't they? And that applies to actually a number of uh, the players involved in the two squads this afternoon. If you're on the bench for Chelsea, that would apply too, as the ball's headed back by Christensen to Caballero, just a long Arsenal ball over the top. I'm thinking Ross Barkley, Callum Hudson-Odoi would fall into that territory on the uh, uh, Chelsea bench. But it is 1-1 with half-time approaching. We're in the third minute of five of added time. Chelsea playing it over the top, but that will bounce away through to Martinez, who very calmly just takes the ball down and uh, grabs it in front of his face. And Arsenal will play out from the back. Martinez backs away, back into his penalty area, gives it out to his left to David Luiz, who was particularly excellent in that semi-final against Manchester City. He was sent off against his former club Chelsea earlier this season. And... Uh, Chelsea themselves now start from the back, but Arsenal drop back into their own half, allowing Chelsea to have the ball. Mikel Arteta is almost on the pitch, on the edge of his coaching area, or outside the edge of his coaching area. Here's Mount, who is a judge to have given a little shove to TNE, and it's a free kick to Arsenal, halfway inside their own half, Chris Sutton. Yeah, Giroud just couldn't direct the header close enough to Mason Mount. It's, it's actually... And you talk about a game of two halves. It's been a half of two halves, hasn't it? Chelsea so dominant early on and Arsenal finishing the half much the stronger. I think Frank Lampard will want half-time to regroup. 
to, to reassess early on in this game. He must have thought, no, football doesn't work like that, but it's a stroll in the park for Chelsea. Arsenal just were not in the game. Stop for the break and the game totally changes. Arsenal good with the press. Mount just a little late there in the uh, in the challenge on Sabayos and it's a free kick to Arsenal on the left hand side. And uh, is, that one, yellow, is that a yellow card? Yeah. For Mason Mount. I thought that was harsh. I mean I have to say a number of the Arsenal players looking to referee the game as well. I think Sabayos. I'm not even sure he caught no, it. No, I think he goes down too easily there, Sabayos. So, uh, nevertheless, it's a yellow card for, for Mason Mount and a free kick for Arsenal on the left-hand side. Yep, there'll be lots of debate at half-time with uh, Chris Dion Dublin about the penalty that Arsenal won. Pepe plays it in, blocked away on the edge of the penalty area, comes out to Bellerin. Bellerin onto his right foot, shoots. It was blocked. Holding is there for Arsenal on the edge of the Chelsea area. But uh, as he tried to to get the ball down it was cleared away out towards the right hand side and uh, now surprise surprise on the right wing David Louise who was up for the set piece back it comes centrally Louise is reluctantly wandering back towards his own half Arsenal still in possession Ceballos uh, and there is the half time whistle exactly five minutes played by Anthony Taylor refereeing his second FA Cup final not many have said that Indeed, no one said that for over a century. Uh, and he's been an important figure, him and the officials, giving the penalty Arsenal's way from which they equalised through Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang just short of the half hour after Aubameyang himself won it against Azpilicueta, who has since gone off injured, and all after Christian Pulisic gave Chelsea the lead in the fifth minute with a really nicely worked goal. But the players head off towards the dressing rooms and the substitutes, the socially distanced substitutes, make their way down the stands as well, the empty stands here at Wembley. And at half-time, the score is Arsenal 1, Chelsea 1. Uh, Chris Sutton, Rob Green, Dion Dublin all with us. Dion, that, that's been a really entertaining game, hasn't it? Yeah. Really good game, and you know, being so close to the pitch, you can see how fast they're moving the ball. I forgot how how far you had to run as a footballer. This pitch is massive, <laughs> and they're making it look so easy. You know, when Chelsea have the ball, well, earlier on they made the pitch so big, and Arsenal couldn't get anywhere near them. And uh, as the, as the lads have said in comms, you know, Chris Sutton said that you know the drinks breakers made all the difference, and it did. Then Arsenal came into the game, so it's been very sort of. A game of basketball, so to speak, but lots and lots of quality. Sabayas on the ball has been great. Giroud, the battle with Giroud and David Luiz. I'm very close to that one. I can hear them, you know, talking to each other, of what they're going to do, and, and Tierney down the left-hand side. Very, very good game to watch. Chelsea haven't been able to get that momentum back, Rob, have they? Through them, didn't it? And it was just three, four times before the penalty itself that Arsenal they did so well, and it, Arteta will be so pleased that they adjusted and they said, look, as Chris was saying, in our first 10 minutes, we haven't really got a grip of the game. Let's go long. Let's turn them round the back of our to be Laqueta because Rhys James is really pushing forward. And then, obviously, with the injury as well, it completely threw them. And they've not really got any sort of grip of the game. When they get the opportunity just to dig deep and clear the ball, they've not taken it. And when they've had the opportunities to play, they've been pressed so well that they haven't, can't do that. So I think Arteta will be, from the reaction, will be the more happy of the two managers. Um, we know what Chris thinks on the penalty. Uh, Rob, you? What did he think? <laughs> oh, good. Did Chris? There's never a penalty, was it? Uh, I mean, was he impeded enough? That's the question. And, and he absolutely wasn't. He made the most of it. There wasn't enough contact for him to go down, a Bamiyang to go down. Absolutely not. Shouldn't have been a penalty. Right. Well, he's got these. Uh, Aubameyang's got the, the wrong side of him, so to speak, from Azpilicueta's point of view. The foul, the initial foul, was outside the penalty area, the pulling back, and that's where I think the actual foul was, but he's kept his arm on him, and he's gone down. And if you're the wrong side with your arm on the player, Anthony Taylor doesn't know how much pressure's being put on him, and you're absolutely right. But, but they looked wrong. They, they looked, they looked, and they took the time, so there was an element mm. of doubt. I think there was interesting because had he, had he not given a penalty, would he have then overturned it to award a penalty then, if that makes sense? Because was, was, yeah. was, there, was there maybe, I mean, I've, I've not got a monitor down here pitch side, but it looked like um, Aubameyang maybe laid a hand on Aspilicueta first, is that right? Or was it enough of a push? Mm. A push? Or not really? 
I've seen it a number of times, and, he, and it looks like he's, he knows he's the wrong side of Azpilicueta. Asby knows that he can't get the other side, and he's waiting till he's got in the box before he goes down. And I, the, if you look like you're pulling someone down, then the player and the player goes down, then you look like you're doing it. You might not it's have a the dive, pressure. Rob. Come on. Let's not mess around. It, <laughs> it's, it's a it's dive. It's clever play. If you'd it's have done it, it was clever it's, play, It's Chris. cheating. If, um, if, you, if you get given it, you're happy. If it gets given against you, you're not happy. Yes? I think well, it's one of them. Yeah, obviously. You, yes, uh, and, yeah. but I think in the modern day, you're playing that, and if you get the wrong side and your arm's on his shoulder... Yeah, but that doesn't matter. We can't keep saying that, Rob. We can't if you get the wrong side and because... Sorry, this, sorry. Other... actually, what I said was complete nonsense there, wasn't it? I mean, because that's, <laughs> that's, I mean, that's <laughs> obvious about... That, yeah, that really is a stupid thing for me to say. because the most that's, stupid I've ever heard. Yeah, because that's the case for any penalty. If it gets given, you're happy, and if it gets given against you, you're not happy. What I meant was... If you was, score, you're happy. Yeah, all right. We don't, you yeah, yeah, we, we don't have to over-egg it, do we? But what I meant to say was, <laughs> if it had been at the other end, Chelsea would have thought it was a penalty and Arsenal wouldn't have thought it was a penalty. That's what I meant. If, I you're, if you're happy no. and you know it, clap oh. your hands. Oh, you're, you're, oh, you're piping up again, are you? <laughs> waiting for that. Hey? It's karma. Yeah. <laughs> Just sat there quietly. Rob, you, you look you actually I can see you. You look like you're about to say something intelligent. So I'll go oh, well, come to you. Let's not let's not go that far. Uh, yeah. just just to say I think there was enough in it to give it. Yes. Uh, eight five oh, five eight at five li five live sport. Uh, rather poor Chris to applaud John Murray off air for putting me away. Uh, Paul, if there's one thing that Chelsea need to improve, it's their defence. I mean, for all the stick arse will get defensively, they've let more goals in than us in the league. It's not to sit hard to see why both of us let goals in. Ian Pulisic looks he has looks like he has potential. Uh, to be the best player in the world. A wonder kid in Germany and now fully living up to the hype. Blimey, yeah, that's piled on. Uh, Gordon having a strong defence and leadership wins big games. Chelsea are better than Arsenal in these areas. Neither have been very good. Ed, Aubameyang was smart. He could have gone down long before getting into the box, but he chose a better spot for that foul to occur. Definitely a penalty for me. Sorry, Chris Sutton. Uh, you can keep uh, those... Um, texts and tweets uh, coming uh, the second half is on the way we'll round up what's going on at the cricket uh, we'll get more details of Lewis Hamilton on pole as well for tomorrow's British Grand Prix which you can hear here on 5 Live uh, but now 6.27 time for a news update on digital BBC Sounds smart speaker and online this is BBC Radio 5 Live 5 Live News Headlines I'm Helen Place Two of the government's scientific advisers say pubs and restaurants in England might have to close again. They say it could be the trade-off to get schools open again next month. A further 74 people have died in the UK after testing positive for COVID-19. It takes the total number of deaths to just over 46,000. Charities are urging the government to offer more protection to people who've spent months shielding from the virus. More than 2 million in most of England, Scotland and Northern Ireland are no longer advised to stay at home. Police searching for a 15-year-old boy who went missing in a lake in Essex have found a body. The teenager was last seen in the water at Lakeside Shopping Centre yesterday. Three Coldstream guards are being investigated by police after they were reportedly involved in a fight with the Queen's footmen. Two men were taken to hospital after the incident at a pub in Westminster last weekend. And around 900 cars have been destroyed in a scrapyard fire near Doncaster. It happened in the village of Carcroft overnight. BBC Sounds. Download the free BBC Sounds app and discover the best of Five Live podcasts. Hiya, I'm Melissa. Hi, I'm Jade. And Hooked is back. Hooked is the podcast where we talk honestly about addiction and recovery. We want to bring addiction out of the shadows and show it's nothing to be ashamed of. We'll be talking about issues like relapse, social media addiction and mental health. That's Hooked, the unexpected addicts. Listen now on BBC Sounds. Five Lives Hooked on BBC Sounds. This is Five Live Sport with Mark Chapman. To the Aegeus Bowl, first of all, Nikesh Raghani. Yeah, England chasing 213 to win this second One Day International and win the series here against Ireland. They have come out racing. They're 57 for one uh, in the seventh over. Johnny Bairstow in particular just smashing the ball to all parts. 41 from 18, seven boundaries and a six for him. And uh, England 57 for one in the seventh over. 
Uh, first day of the Bob Willis Trophy in county cricket. Dan Norcross is at Surrey Middlesex. Well, Middlesex closed on 264 for four. Nick Gubbins with a quite fantastic 150 not out of 257 balls. He batted for all but two overs of the day. Surrey will be a bit displeased. There are three dropped catches, but they've used all... Well, they've used eight bowlers, can you believe it? Just a couple of other quick notable scores. Kent 344 for six against Essex. Hino Kuhn making 140 not out. And a wonderful 10th wicket partnership of 107 between Jack Brooks and Stephen Davis rescued Somerset. They ended up being bowled out for 296. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Dan. Uh, let's get reaction now to Lewis Hamilton being on pole uh, for tomorrow's British Grand Prix. Our commentator, Jack Nichols, watched the action at Silverstone. Despite Valtteri Bottas seeming to have the edge over Hamilton over the weekend at Silverstone, it was the British driver who pulled it out when it mattered to start on pole position for the British Grand Prix. He's five points clear of Bottas at the top of the championship in a title that will be decided between one of those two drivers, Hamilton looking for his seventh world title to match the all-time record of Michael Schumacher. And this is what he had to say after securing pole position at Silverstone. I made some changes going into qualifying and it, it was worse. So uh, it was a real struggle out there and this track is just awesome because it's with a gust of wind you have a headwind and tailwind and crosswind in different parts of the circuit so it's like juggling balls whilst you're on a moving plate at high speed <laughs> uh, and obviously we had that spin which you know it's all about qualifying is a lot about confidence and building and damn I had that spin and I was already down I was struggling through the first section every lap I'm, I don't know how but with some deep breaths managed to compose myself it never gets old that's for sure. Mercedes' dominance this season is absolutely staggering. A second clear of Max Verstappen's Red Bull in third and Charles Leclerc's Ferrari in fourth and an impressive fifth place for Lando Norris for McLaren. The British driver has an outside shot of getting on the podium that surely he would be sharing with Lewis Hamilton. If it's the top step, Hamilton will extend his championship lead, but if Bottas takes the win, he'll move to the top of the standings. So the fight at the front, even though it's only a two-horse race, is going to be crucial for the outcome of this year's championship. And you can hear the British Grand Prix on Five Live Sport tomorrow afternoon in the Scottish Premiership. Rangers won 1-0 at Aberdeen on the opening day of the season. Also finished Dundee United 1, St Johnston 1, Hibs 2, Kilmarnock 1, St Mirren 1, Livingston 0. It was also the National League North and South playoff finals this afternoon. In the former, Altrincham won 1-0 at Boston. Uh, in the latter, Weymouth beat Dartford on penalties, so Weymouth and Altrincham will be in the National League next season. Uh, FA Cup final day. Arsenal won, Chelsea won at half-time. Rob Green, Chris Sutton, Dion Dublin uh, with us. Chelsea need to start the second half like they start of the first half, don't they? How do, how do they wrestle the momentum back, Rob? I think they, they need to get the ball into Oli, uh, into Giroud, get him, get him back into play. And the front, uh, the two off him have come narrow from the start. And, and Arsenal haven't been able to deal with that because they've been finding them spaces. And it's just that quality of ball into into Giroud. And they need, they need him in the game. If they get him in the game, they boss the game. And I think they can play from there. Goal was beautiful, wasn't it? Chelsea's goal. It was a great goal and it, and it just showed what, what they can do. And you looked at the Arsenal back three and they were looking at each other and they all ended up about th three yards apart, one side of the goal and Pulisic on the other, just rolling it into, chipping it over Martinez. And it's so hard to pick up when you've got those, those two just sat off because Giroud is such a presence up front that he occupies them three and they don't want to step out because they'll get exposed so it's a real, it was a real quandary Arsenal seemed to get it sorted after those 10-15 minutes and I think they need to pose them another problem I've said this before on air Dion but it, it feels like Lampard has handled Christian Pulisic's first season over here very well, he's allowed him time to uh, adapt to football in England and grow into it yeah, definitely, and he seems to be incredibly sort of relaxed on the ball. You know, Olivier Giroud is just bouncing it down to him, and he's doing his thing. And there is there is a, there is a point that Chelsea could do better if, if Arsenal are trying to play out. I can see Olivier Giroud; he's trying to squeeze, he's trying to be the the one that gets Chelsea up the pitch, squeezing. But nobody seems to be going in behind him, Mount or Pulisic or Jorginho. And uh, I think there's a, a big opportunity for Chelsea in order to get the ball back in the final third of Arsenal's. On the other hand, if Arsenal can start the second half like the second half of the first half, if you got me, um, they will be into a, they will give Chelsea a hard game. 
Yeah, I, th- yeah, I think I'm with you. On um, uh, <laughs> Ch- Chelsea just needs to be careful with the high line, don't they, Chris? Because the, the ball... So- I mean, this is where Arsenal's goal came from, but the ball yeah. over the top into the right wing-back channel has, has caused Chelsea problems. Yes, it has. I, I think the drinks break had a huge impact, or, or has had a huge impact on this game because Arsenal did go a little bit more direct. I think we, look, look, we, we all would have thought the same thing, that, that Arsenal do have that real pace up top and, and that's their threat. And we know Aubameyang, you know, is hardly a player on the face of the earth who's quicker than him. And, and that was going to be the danger. That's how their goal came about, albeit it, it shouldn't have been given. And and Chelsea and Frank will be well aware of that in this second half. I mean, it, and this is why I think we all said it is it, you know, always going to be virtually impossible to call this game from the evidence of the first half. half. Chelsea dominated the first half of the first half. Arsenal brilliant in the second half. I mean, call this one. How can you call this one, Chappers? Well, that's that's your job. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Let's return to to Dion Dublin and uh, Ian Dennis. A cutting Mark Chapman, a chuntering Chris Sutton. And here we are, ready to go for the start of the second half. Neither side has made a change. I'll run through the two teams, although I've just seen as Piliqueta with a very heavily strapped thigh making his way slowly but surely up the steps just uh, away towards our left-hand side. So, the two teams, Martinez in goal for, uh, for Arsenal as referee Anthony Taylor blows his whistle and the game restarts the 139th FA Cup final and Arsenal won, Chelsea won for the second half on Five Live and the World Service from the BBC. Martinez in goal, a back three of Holding, Louise and Tierney. Bearing and Maitland-Niles are the wing-backs, right and left respectively. Ceballos and Xhaka in the centre of midfield. Pepe, Aubameyang and Lacazette up front for uh, for Arsenal. For Chelsea, Caballero is in goal. They now have Christensen playing in the defence with Aspilicueta off injured, along with Zuma and Rudiger in a back three. James, the right wing-back. Alonso, the left wing-back. Kovacic and Jorginho in the centre of midfield. Mount, Giroud and Pulisic, who gave Chelsea an early lead. And here is Pulisic, and he's over the halfway line, and he's got space to run into, and Pulisic is still going. Pulisic all the way into the penalty area, tries to place it, and guides it wide. And then all of a sudden, Pulisic has gone down now, and he's gone down clutching his hamstring on his right leg. So further concerns for Frank Lampard as the chance went wide, 1-1. Yeah, and he's slamming his hand against the floor. That doesn't look good. That looks like Christian Pulisic's last contribution in this final Really good play from Giroud again, the link man. And then Pulisic on the halfway line just keeps driving and driving with the ball. I actually think Tierney makes a wrong decision. Mount makes a run off the ball and Tierney goes with Mount. But the danger was Pulisic and he should have come across earlier. Pulisic right footed. He actually pulls up before he gets the shot off. I was just going to say that. Yeah, the end for him. He's trying to feed the ball into the far corner. Let's go pitch side. Dion Dublin. Yeah, I'm, I was right behind Pulisic there. He, I can see him bearing down on goal, left all the Arsenal defenders uh, for dead, and I could see exactly what Chris Sutton just said. There. He's trying to open himself out, but even before he struck the ball, you could he could see that his his pace sort of slowed down. He struck the ball because he was in on goal. He he was having pain before he even struck the ball, and then as soon as he struck the ball, his hand went straight towards his the the the, the, the top of his sort of hamstring. And you can always, as soon as he struck it, I could see the pain in his face, slamming, slamming his hand on the ground as well. That's a bad one. Really bad, that one. Well, the stretcher was on the pitch as Dion was talking, but it's not required, but he's not able to continue. He's being helped off the pitch. And uh, Pulisic, his American dream, to coin Chris Sutton's phrase, is, uh, is over and uh, ending in a lot of pain as well. And uh, certainly compounds the problems for Frank Lampard. Bearing in mind next Saturday, Chelsea are in the Champions League, the last 16, and they'll be depleted now without Aspilicueta, without Pulisic. Bearing in mind they're already 3 0 down from that first leg against the uh, the German side because Pulisic will not be able to continue. That looks a really a bad one. Yeah, it's a bad one, and it's Pedro who stripped. I wonder whether it'd be Pedro or Hudson Adoy who got the opportunity. As Pulisic is carried down the tunnel. But a good replacement in, in Pedro. But it also means because of injuries now, with Pedro coming on, of course, his move to uh, to Roma is imminent. This will be his swan song. So early in the second half, although they've got 
three more substitutions to make. They'll only have one more opportunity to make those three substitutions in the regulation 90, will that will Frank Lampard, because they've both been enforced as uh, as Pedro comes on for uh, for Pulisic, and Chelsea are forced into that uh, that second change as it's 1-1 and the game restarts on BBC Radio 5 Live. So Chelsea in the royal blue shirts and shorts are playing from right to left as we look. And here is Pedro. And Pedro now all of a sudden bombs forward. And he's making good ground on the left-hand side. Holding is with him. And it loops off Holding's legs and behind for a corner kick to Chelsea. Good early pace from Pedro. Yeah, little Pedro putting the burners on. Holding. Galloping back alongside him. Just gets in front and stops the cross. But a chance for Chelsea from a corner. Mason Mount normally has terrific delivery so in front of all of those banners where Arsenal have won the FA Cup for those years and blazing behind that goal it's Mount with the corner towards the far post good take by Martinez the goalkeeper it's very Talked confident good clutch of the ball with both hands talked him up didn't I too close to the keeper demanding goalkeeping but expect better from Mount bit of a safe corner that normally generates more pace on the ball so by us a lot of area to run into into the centre circle short of the halfway line then Arsenal go back Chelsea who took the lead through Pulisic an early goal cancelled out through that uh, Aubameyang penalty just before the uh, the half hour certainly Arsenal benefited from the uh, the drinks break as the ball over the top towards Pepe and it's hooked away and high out of play over on that far side by Rudiger and it will be an Arsenal throw deep inside the Chelsea half. Arsenal, who've won their last six FA Cup finals all the way back since they lost to Liverpool in Cardiff in 2001. Spurs won seven in a row, 1901-1902. to And Arsenal are looking to try and match their North London neighbours by doing exactly the same as they have a throw over on that far side the left deep inside the Chelsea half it's a long looping throw into the penalty area you can hear the cries of the Chelsea players as it was headed away by Zuma Chelsea at the minute giving the ball away here is uh, Pepe coming inside on that right off the right central area now plays it over towards the far side Tierney prods it forward back towards Pepe works over the cross and caught at his near post by Caballero in goal he likes to drift Pepe all over the pitch, came off the right-hand side. And a good run to the byline. Caballero alert at his near post, making the catch. Here is Christiansen, the, one of the Chelsea substitutes. He finds Mount, lays it off towards Rhys James. Haven't been able to, to get into the groove as they were in, say, the first quarter of the game, Chelsea, have they? Absolutely spot on. Really started the game strongly. It's Arsenal with the impetus. They were looking the more threatening team. Alonso, diagonal ball. Rhys James is an essential area. It'll come back to James just outside the centre circle. Lays it out. Zuma, forward ball over on that far side. The Chelsea right as they play from right to left. Then they go back. Christiansen. He'll find Kovacic just outside the centre circle. Forward ball, James chips it forward, making the run is Giroud and Holding. Who, when you think back to the last time these two sides met in the FA Cup oh, final three oh, years oh, ago, oh, Holding did well against uh, Diego Costa and again he showed his strength and prevented that ball from reaching Olivier Giroud. A stepping into the challenge there was Rudiger. Well timed, Jorginho, Mason Mount, just... Uh, Midway through the Arsenal half in the weak sunshine here. Kovacic coming forward, tries to thread a ball through and uh, unable to pick out Mason Mount Kovacic and it's back with uh, Martinez, the Arsenal goalkeeper. Chris Sutton. Yeah, that pass wasn't on. That actually worked a good little situation in midfield and Kovacic just over eager, trying to feed the ball into Mount. who made a run in behind, but way off with the pass. It's been a, a long stint for Chris Sutton. He was here at uh, well in advance of, uh, of midday, not that we don't know about it. And he'll stay on until 9 o'clock tonight with Ali Bruce Ball, 606 0808590963. Might well be delayed due to the, top, the possibility of, uh, of extra time as it's still 1 1 here, eight minutes into the second half. And one, what is a competitive yeah. and uh, been an enjoyable cup final? It has been. As I say, we totally 
going into the unknown with these two teams who have been brilliant at times this season but then been inconsistent very evenly balanced game there in just took back I thought there a little bit but it'll still be an Arsenal throw Arteta's actually on ball boy duties decked out all in black matching the colour of his jet black hair the youngest manager in the Premier League and in fact indeed these are the two youngest managers in the uh, in the top flight he must have a few grey hairs he must have a few Deno nothing wrong with being grey as uh, Arsenal forward that's what management does to people it's, it's also a cool, what cool customer it's working with you as well it can turn people grey <laughs> <laughs> here's Perry mm, grey balls <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> mm. Side, don't get personal now. So, uh, <laughs> Bearing goes back, holding. Louise, midway through his, uh, his own half. The wing backs are pushed on. There's that run. There's that run from Abamyang off the left hand side, inside Reese James, trying to get the ball in behind, but Chelsea switched on at the back there. Zuma read it well. Here is Rudiger to Alonso. Arsenal will press. Bayering goes in search of the ball. Then it's in field. Coming under pressure is Jorginho. The intensity from Arsenal working very hard off the ball. Pepe will chase. Rudiger goes back to Caballero. Sweeps it left-footed downfield. Giroud tries to get himself in front of Luiz. Surely impeded, and yes, he was. It's applauded by Frank Lampard. And then... Mikel Arteta voices his frustration in the referee's direction. The free kick is taken quickly. Pedro coming forward now. Alonso reluctant to go forward on the overlap. is a little bit slow in doing so as Pedro switches play out towards the right side. The shadows of the stand creeping ever longer as Chelsea attack into that half away towards our left-hand side. Here now is Kovacic over the halfway line, pointing, directing from the sidelines is, uh, is Arteta. Just lacking that fluency, Ian, aren't they? Which, which they had early on in the game. Too many touches in the middle of the park. Maybe not that slick movement up top, which we saw in the first 15 minutes, where Giroud and Mount and Pulisic are all linking up well and alive. Well, that next substitution that Frank Lampard is going to have to be a well-timed one because, you know, he can't afford another injury. But he'll only have that one opportunity then to enable those three other substitutes to come on if he needs to change it he's got hudson Adoy and ross barkley as potential players to come off the bench tammy abraham another one Mikel arteta still has the full complement although the uh, the fourth official at the minute who is uh, chris kavanagh is uh, telling arteta not to stray outside of his technical area as kovacic comes forward it's a misplaced pass lampard turns away in frustration at the minute, Chelsea are struggling with that creativity to find that penetration to break through Arsenal in that final third. They're seeing a lot of the ball, but they're playing in front of Arsenal. So the ball is now looking towards Mason Mount, who's made that bursting run through the midfield. And as it drops inside the penalty area, it goes away from him, and it's caught by the Arsenal goalkeeper, Martinez. He's the one who has made the movements in behind. I think we always associate Giroud with being the focal point. Pepe, Lacazette, Lacazette will try and carve the ball out to Aubameyang in the penalty area, good block by Christensen, comes out towards Xhaka, outside the area, Xhaka's shot, left footed, always on the rise and wide, and goal kick, and it's 1-1 on five live in the World Service. Yeah, a Swiss slice, wild effort from Xhaka, but a real opportunity for Arsenal, Lacazette too slow on the ball, took an extra touch when Aubameyang would have been in left-hand side of the box, box eventually smuggles the ball out to him and Aubameyang takes a touch inside and the danger is cleared Christiansen does well to block a shot that's the voice of, uh, of Chris Sutton Premier League winner former Chelsea player of course and three Scottish Cup successes that he had from his time at uh, Celtic as here we are at Wembley Stadium for this FA Cup final at the start of August and in four weeks' time, the winners will be back taking on the champions Liverpool in the Community Shield, August the 29th. And just to think, the Premier League begins in six weeks' time. Still, European football, although it might well be short-lived for Chelsea to look forward to, as Jorginho, that's next Saturday. It'll be live on Five Live as Kovacic is over the halfway line. Back towards Jorginho and bounces into the centre circle in the Arsenal half. Switches play out towards that far side and it's brought under control and then played early in by Rhys James in the penalty area. 
And stretching was Alonso. He didn't Might expect have. it, did he? He didn't know. Alonso, great ball in from Reese James. Bellerin gets caught under the ball at the far post, and Alonso on his heels thought Bellerin was going to touch it. And the ball actually comes off Alonso and out for a, an Arsenal throw in, level with their own 18 yard line. Poor from Alonso. We've been playing nearly for an hour here in the sunshine at Wembley Stadium. It's still one apiece. Christensen on the halfway line, heads it away. Mount, yet to have a real chance in this uh, this second half as a free kick, a foul on Mason Mount. Free kick to Chelsea in the half away towards our left-hand side that is just tossed into the air by Ceballos. And then it's stroked back by Kovacic. Played forward then by Rudiger. Alonso on the near side, the left. He finds Kovacic. Kovacic strokes it back. Every outfield player is in the half towards our left. Christensen tells him to switch it to the right. The ball is played forward by Zuma. A little bit behind Zuma, but with those telescopic legs of his, he brings the ball under control. As then Rhys James switching play out towards the left-hand side. Level the penalty area, Alonso. Alonso comes into the penalty area now. Finds Rhys James just outside the D. Shot was charged down. It'll break up towards Lacazette, who then lays it off towards Pepe and Pepe will run forward but runs straight towards Rudiger it breaks away from him and then Pepe was fouled and that will be a free kick and Pepe has stayed down free kick to Arsenal Chris yeah and you feel that the tide is just turning again and Chelsea are feeling a little bit more confident in this second half but we know that Arsenal have that threat from Pepe as a magician draws the foul from Alonso Alonso knows what he's doing and they've got to be watchful at the back Chelsea if they start to control possession and territory it's become a lot tighter hasn't it in this second half much more of a cagey affair Kovacic Christensen the heart of that back three Rudiger to the left and it's a left footed ball all the way back to Caballero, more live football later in the week to look forward to. Wolves against Olympiacos from Molyneux on Thursday night in the Europa League. Manchester City, Real Madrid in the last 16 of the Champions League on Friday. And I mentioned in a week's time, Bayern against Chelsea. Zuma hits it long. Giroud, such a rich vein of goal-scoring form. The former Arsenal striker, he scored six goals in six successive games. Hasn't had many opportunities here today. It's Kovacic out towards Alonso. Alonso on this near side, the left. Ten yards in from the touchline. Kovacic is just behind him. And now Jorginho. But once again, it's just it's quite laboured, really, from a Chelsea point of view. They're lacking that, that little bit of zip in that final third to try and prise open the Arsenal defence. Here is Mason Mount. On that far side, the right, back towards Rhys James. And They're getting greater control of the ball, though. Yeah, and that's changed a little bit, but I take your point, maybe not moving it quickly enough. That's a nice pass, though. And all of a sudden, Pedro runs forward now, just outside the D. Pedro comes back onto his right foot, can't get a sight of goal. Rhys James joins the attack. James will let one fly right-footed, but always on the rise, and it's off target, and it's a goal kick, and we're still at 1-1, 62 minutes play. Chris Sutton, let's get an update from the cricket. Remember, Ireland finished 212 for nine, so England require 213 to win. Nikesh Raghani. Yeah, England absolutely running away with this one at the moment. 98 for two after 12 overs. Johnny Bairstow, 63 from just 31 deliveries. Tom Banton also smashing the ball to all parts now. He's unbeaten on 15. England 98 for two in the 13th. And commentary continues on Five Live Sports Extra. Well, the, uh, the highlights, by the way, for this cup final on match of the day tonight at 20 past 10. But very soon we'll be having the, um, the drinks break I'll just be leaving the stadium then. Then oh, that'll be the end of my shift. Not you two uh, to complain, is it? <laughs> Rudy, go back to uh, to Caballero. Well, I tell you what, little Bruce, the simulation game. Wonder what he thinks about the the Arsenal penalty. Well, if you put your hand on the shoulder and then you go down you're giving the referee a decision to make it's not but like it was a blatant dive the there, was, point. there was contact oh come on here is your so, genius. so any contact that means penalty does it there has to be enough contact you can get your calls into Chris Sutton just say to the producers I want to talk about the penalty it'll guarantee you a hotline here is Mason Mount in the penalty area can't get a sight of goal pulls it back Giroud stabs it forward 
lifted then out towards Pedro, brings it under control, has done well on the left-hand side. Pedro's cross, though, is charged down by Bayerin, and it'll go out for a throw right down by the corner flag. That was lovely from Christiansen. Just scoops the ball out wide, and the cross was blocked. But I think Frank Lampard will feel that Chelsea are in a better place now. They've gained control back went through a long period where Arsenal were in the ascendancy but keeping the ball better but then you watch the, the drinks break the tactical break will come into play and all of a sudden it disrupts it is uh, Mason Mount left hand side of the penalty here a good pacey ball in first time from the left hand side and cleared by Maitland Niles over on that far side for a, a Chelsea throw that was better and we've, we've talked about Giroud being such a prolific goal scorer wonder whether he's thinking I should have gambled great ball from Mount left hand side flashes the ball across the Arsenal six yard line and Giroud for once on his heels should have gone earlier Chelsea do have control of the ball they are dictating but it's still 1-1 they are dictating but they're not really creating well, that wasn't the worst ball in Mason Mount Alonso Kovacic, Giroud has made the run not spotted, instead he goes short into the centre circle, then it's swept out by Jorginho to Alonso, just about keeps the ball in play, he actually did well on the left-hand side, Alonso infield to Kovacic, scoops it forward towards Mason Mount, Mason Mount tries to hit it back first time with a cutback, stopped by Ceballos and goes out of play for a corner kick and they're just starting to ask questions now Chelsea. I mentioned Mason Mount's movement in behind, he was looking the little, the little dinked ball gets to the byline and wins the corner for Chelsea. Can they make something of this? This last corner was disappointing. There is a, a quarter of the pitch that is still bathed in sunshine in the end that Chelsea are attacking. But it's in the shadows where Chelsea will take the corner and it goes deep towards the far post. Headed away by Tierney who then was floored. I think he just bounced off Zuma. He's all right though Tierney to continue. Who incidentally, when he scored last week against Watford, was the first Scott to score for Arsenal since Scott Marshall in 1996. And when I say that's not Scott Marshall, the name as in Scott, because he was born in Edinburgh. That's what it sounded like. Yeah. yeah. I know what in, you meant. Just in case you were going to try and come back with a flippant comment. No, no. That wouldn't be me. <laughs> no, it wouldn't. You're better than that. Free kick to Arsenal, Martinez to take it, still 1-1. Five live in the World Service from the BBC, 66 minutes played. Towering header by Zuma. Here then is Kovacic. He's uh, overrun, crowded out in the, uh, the midfield by, uh, by Arsenal. Been a quite a period of time where Arsenal don't seem to have had that sustained spell of possession of the ball in their red and white shirts. Back with holding to Martinez, the goalkeeper. Luiz is to his left, the Brazilian inside his penalty area now has it. Again, Chelsea will press. It's cleared away on that far side by Tierney. Up towards Aubameyang. Up in the air it goes. Arsenal now will pick up the ball through Bayerin, who now comes forward, surging forward. And Bayerin's still going. And Bayerin, in the end, was stopped by a challenge from Christiansen. Pepe continues with the Arsenal attack. He finds Aubameyang. Aubameyang still going in the penalty area. Oh, what a brilliant goal from Aubameyang. That was superb from Aubameyang. The impudent chip over Caballero. And then the acrobatic goal celebration and Aubameyang at the double as Arsenal have come from behind and lead Chelsea by two goals to one. This is absolutely genius from Aubameyang. It really is. The ball works out to him. Left-hand side of the box. It looks like it looked initially like Christiansen had dealt with the attack, but it's played out to him. Left-hand side of the box. He faces Zuma up. On his right foot, looks like he's shaping to bend the ball into the far corner, as we've seen him do on so many occasions. And he just drifts past Zuma on the left and lifts the ball. It's a sublime finish over Cavallero. It's wonderful, it's genius from Aubameyang. Shapes up, shifts it, and dinks the ball over Cavallero. Arsenal and Arteta wanted to keep Aubameyang. You can see why that was wonderful. 
Well, you think that he scored, what, 25-plus club goals in each of his last five seasons. That's another reminder of why Arsenal have to keep hold of Aubameyang. We've got a drinks break. Arsenal lead by two goals to one. And let's get the thoughts of Dion Dublin before our correspondent, John Murray, takes over. That's just total coolness, that is. What an amazing finish. Great work from Pepe. Picked the right pass. I actually thought the pass was behind Aubameyang, but he just calmed his nerves. I actually thought he was going to try and curl it into the keeper's left, but he just dragged it back again. And because Zuma had his shoulders across the pitch, you're going back on your heels, you can't turn quick enough. An amazing, amazing finish. Chelsea have had more of the ball, haven't really done anything with it. They're trying to come out and um, go down the left hand side, but Alonso doesn't really want to be there on his own. They're leaving him one on one, Arsenal. They don't mind him because he's never going to use his pace. Arsenal aren't done yet there's a lot more to come from Arsenal thanks Dion I do feel for you down there on your own no friends at all no one within about 10 yards of you with your kitchen chairs so there'll be more from Dion to come Rob Green as well but what a what a fine cup final goal that was Chris Sutton from Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang two goals in the semi-final against Manchester City two goals in the final against Chelsea he's the big game man yeah and it's sad that this stadium isn't full because half of this stadium would have absolutely erupted. One of the great goals, such a, a brilliant player. We've talked about his importance to Arsenal, knows exactly what he wants to do as the ball arrives. It wasn't on to bend it into the far corner, and, but he sets Zuma up beautifully, sells him back onto his left foot, and he's still got work to do. Cavalero rushing out and he just lifts the ball over him. It's an absolute work of art, it really is. Arsenal 2, Chelsea 1, as Rudiger sends a long ball forward, but that's over the top of uh, both Giroud and David Luiz and bounces through to goalkeeper Martinez. So Arsenal leading Chelsea by two goals to one. They were 1-0 down in the fifth minute when Christian Pulisic scored, but Chelsea... Things have turned against them, injuries as well, Aspilicueta and Pulisic having to, to go off with hamstring injuries, a contentious penalty, more on that I'm sure to come, but Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang scoring a, a wonderful goal just now in the 67th minute to put Arsenal in front, beat Zuma inside out, it wasn't the first time incidentally that Aubameyang's had space on the left-hand side as Arsenal have come forward, but most of the... Uh, <clears throat> You can take over there, we'll have a drink of water, Chris. <laughs> no, you're absolutely right, John. Brilliant play from Aubameyang. Such a clear mind. He's in such a good place. And I can, you can understand the desperation that Arsenal fans all around the world, they need him to stay. And you can when he can produce moments of magic like that, he would, he would cost zillions to replace. Zillions, John. Zillions. Zillions. I thought there was a recession on. That was a brilliant finish, though. On a, the clipped finish on his left foot. Absolutely delightful. It was um, beautiful to watch. But, but uh, you, you don't see Premier League players made to look that foolish defensively. It was like something you'd see on a schoolboy pitch. The Caught. best player facing him up. Wonderful, wonderful skill. Kovacic was in trouble there, but Arsenal uh, were able to deal with it when it was eventually fired forward. Kovacic again curling the ball over the top. Chelsea coming from behind now. Here's Alonso on the left-hand side, drives it across, takes a deflection, and then it's absolutely walloped up into the sky. Out of our sight, actually, uh, above the, uh, the level above. And uh, Granit Xhaka, it was, who cleared it, and he is now caught going in for a 50-50 challenge, about 10 yards outside the box, both sets of players have uh, have gathered around, and a yellow card... Well, that's is... Kovacic again. Was uh, it Kovacic again? Well, was a yellow card's been shown to Ceballos, I think. I think for... Uh, yeah, I think for... Is that what's going to to, uh, yeah. to to bring out a yellow card. He was late, we said. He's that type of player, likes to get stuck in, and he may be slightly... Oh, fortunate. it's a second yellow card yeah. for well, Kovacic, and well. Chelsea are now down to ten men. Kovacic sent off for that challenge on Granit Xhaka, 
and he protests, he walks away, puts his palms apart, but Chelsea, having lost two players to injury, have now lost Matteo Kovacic from their midfield, sent off, Chelsea 2-1 down, and will face the rest of this match with 10 men. I mean, it's a, it's a tough one on Kovacic. What I would say is the Arsenal players surrounded the referee. I think it's a genuine attempt to win the ball, and I don't think it helped the Arsenal players' reaction, if I'm totally honest. Arteta, out of a technical area, rushing, putting pressure on the referee. Is that really worthy of a second yellow? But, you have to say, the first one was a yellow, and he was always going to be on the edge. I thought, we, well, we both thought he'd gotten away with it, but he hasn't. And now Chelsea have an absolute mountain to climb. So just like the previous That's FA Cup final between these two sides, Chelsea have had a man sent off, and Arsenal, who won that one back in 2017 by two goals to one, lead this one by two goals to one. Harsh, you feel, Chris? I, I think that that's a, a really harsh decision. There's a little coming together. Arteta and Rudiger in the it, Arsenal technical area. The ball bounced off the pitch next to the uh, Arsenal technical area. Mikel Arteta is... Uh, well, the, the fourth official, Chris Kavanagh, is there, just standing in front of Mikel Arteta. And that's a yellow card shown to Rudiger and... Anthony Taylor's coming across to the bench, and I think I wonder if he's going to show one you, to Mikel Arteta as well. Do you know what? I can understand, totally it understand, is. why the, the Chelsea players are aggravated, because there was the penalty decision, and I, I don't like the way the Arsenal players have gone about trying to get the second yellow given to Kovacic. They knew exactly what they're doing, and they're putting pressure on the referee. I know it's... The second FA Cup final, his refereed, but I can tell you what Chelsea players and management and fans will be thinking. I wish he never had. Well, it was Anthony Taylor who refereed the, the, uh, the final in 2017 and sent off Victor Moses for diving, if you remember, Chris. A second yellow There's card there, isn't there? Uh, Frank Lampard as Ian Dennis was suggesting, is now going to make that triple change. So he's got one more substitution slot in uh, in normal time, if you like. So Tammy Abraham, Ross Barkley and Callum Hudson-Odoi are going to come on next time the ball goes out of play. Uh, I must say, I expected Hudson-Odoi to, to come on when Pulisic was injured and he was warming up. I'm sure he'll have been disappointed that he wasn't the, the choice then. Instead, it was Pedro who came on and um, Arsenal are in possession on the halfway line. Here's Bellerin who played an important part in that second Arsenal goal, incidentally. And then Lacazette gives it to Pepe. Pepe curling, a left foot ball. It's behind Aubameyang, who's on a hat-trick in the cup final. Aubameyang turns, plays it through and Caballero is able to pick it up because Lacazette couldn't reach it. 2-1 Arsenal, Chris Sutton. It's, it's amazing, John. You spoke about the time at times Aubameyang is given on the ball out left he's been such a threat unlucky there with an incisive pass into Lacazette inside the penalty box who couldn't control Chelsea with the ball in front of their own penalty area Chris will be with Alistair Bruce Ball for 6.06 later on 5 Live and we will let you know when the lines are open for that but this is 5 Live and the World Service this FA Cup final also live on BBC One television if you're on your way home and it's been an enjoyable, eventful and absorbing FA Cup final so far. And at the moment, the record winners of the competition, 13 times winners, Arsenal, have got their noses in front. Even though Chelsea had a good deal of possession in the second half, it's Arsenal who are 2-1 ahead. As the ball's played forward by James into the penalty area, cleared up in the air by Holding. Martinez, the goalkeeper's come a long way for it. Giroud trying to impede him, a clawed at it, the Arsenal goalkeeper, and then it's played out by Tierney for a throw-in on the far side. And we're going to see this triple change for Chelsea now. In fact, while they do that, Dion, just give us your latest thoughts down on the touchline. Yeah, it was very, very entertaining when the ball did run out and Chelsea were trying to get it back. Arteta did his best to get in front of Rudiger. Rudiger and Arteta going head-to-head -head and a, few, a bit of pushing and shoving. Frank Lampard just talking to his assistant, didn't even raise his head, making sure that he gets this substitution right. It's the last roll of the dice for Chelsea. 
So the three players coming off are Olivier Giroud, Antonio Rudiger, and Mason Mount. So this is quite a turn of the card by Frank Lampard bringing on Abraham to replace Giroud up front, the inform Giroud. Hudson Adoy is now on, and it is Chelsea with Jorginho. Jorginho to Alonso. Chelsea chasing the game now, and we've got just 12 minutes of the 90 plus added time to play. Jorginho to Alonso. Now he has Pedro scored in the Europa League final between these sides last season. Pedro, he has his cross from the left hand side. And Tierney threw himself at it. I'm not sure if he got a touch. No, he didn't, says the assistant on the far side. It's out of play for an Arsenal throw deep inside their own half. It's a good ball that from Pedro out on the left. Created a bit of space, holding not close enough. And fired the ball across, flashed across the face of the Arsenal goal. Looks like Chelsea have gone to a back four now. John, so just tweak things Frank has. With the ten men, of course. Yeah, and Jorginho, middle of the park with, with Barkley. He's going three ahead of them. The managers could make another change in extra time, should it come to that. Uh, N'Golo Kante not used yet and uh, Frank Lampard has now made five changes so he won't be appearing in normal time just in case you're wondering by the way William not involved he's got an Achilles problem so uh, that is why he has not featured yet and indeed is not on the bench here's Alonso Arsenal 2 Chelsea 1 Chelsea playing it away from the back. Jorginho then goes for a ball over the top towards Abraham Martinez. He's come right to the edge of his area. He's grabbed the ball. It's got to be outside Sur the box. Surely he grabbed it outside of the, the penalty area. Not gone up. Certainly his body was outside of <laughs> yes. the box. He stepped out of the penalty area. The question is whether he then grabbed the ball this... when it had bounced yeah. into the box. I mean, that, that was either absolute genius from Martinez or, or he's an got away with it. Fluke. I know what my money's on. Well, the the assistant who, right in line. The assistant on the far side has has made a couple of very good calls today, and uh, and he certainly felt that Martinez grabbed the ball when it had bounced into the penalty area, even though he was standing outside. Now, hang on a minute. The ball's out of play. Or it's a substitution. Lacazette is going to be replaced for Arsenal by Eddie and Ketia. And uh, I don't think we've seen a replay yet, have we, of uh, Martinez no, grabbing the ball? They're showing Lovicic's second yellow, but... This is Arsenal's first change, incidentally. Frank Lampard's made five. So, yeah, yeah it, did, it did look like he was outside the box. Martinez. You can imagine the old hearts beating quickly in Stockley Park. <laughs> Right, so Eddie Nketiah steps into the FA Cup final, 21 years old. He was an unused substitute in Baku at the end of last season when these teams met, these clubs met in the Europa League final. I must say, Chris, yeah, I cannot help but think this. Uh, I mean, what a twist it is that Arsenal and Chelsea supporters at the end of last season travelled thousands and thousands of miles to watch these two teams play in Baku in Azerbaijan which is getting on towards Central Asia. And when the, door, the match is being played on their doorstep here in northwest London, neither of the sets of supporters can come into the ground to see it. But that is football behind closed doors. And this FA Cup final is into the last 10 minutes of normal time. And it is Arsenal who are coming forward, holding this 2-1 lead that they do. The ball swung into the box and it's cleared away by Zuma for a corner to Arsenal, who, of course, are in absolutely no hurry whatsoever. They've beaten Chelsea in the two previous FA Cup finals between these clubs and they're winning this one as well. Ceballos takes the corner short, then gives it back. Maitland-Niles on his right foot curls it in. Oh, and it is headed away on the edge of the box by Jorginho. I wasn't sure where that was going, but he did manage to get it glanced beyond the far post and behind for another Arsenal corner. Yeah, it wasn't the worst ball. Looked in from Maitland-Niles. We're about 25 yards out. It's a shooting opportunity, but just fed the ball in. And Jorginho took no chances, flicked it behind, and Arsenal not in any rush. Arsenal leading by two goals to one. It's an Arsenal corner, and um, 
Uh, actually, Ross Barkley has run across there to, to give the ball back to Pepe, who's going to take this. Left-footed. Here's the delivery towards the back post. It's over the top of Aubameyang, who peels away. And he's going to allow the ball, I think, to run out of play. It is up, and uh, actually the Arsenal player who chased it slips over off the pitch, but it's a throw-in, he's OK. It's um, Ceballos. He's back on the pitch and it's a throw-in for Chelsea. England's cricketers on the way to victory in Southampton with you, Nick Ashrugani. Yes, another 82 runs for England to win this second ODI and win the series. They've got 30 overs to do it in, but they have just lost uh, their main man, Johnny Bairstow. 82 from 41 deliveries, fabulous innings, but he was caught behind off the bowling of Joshua Little. So Owen Morgan is at the crease with Sam Billings with England 131 for four after 16 overs. Commentary continues on Five Live Sports Extra. On Five Live tomorrow, you'll hear commentary on the British Grand Prix with Lewis Hamilton in pole position. It begins at ten past two. And uh, Arsenal leading here in the cup final by two goals to one. Take the throw. The ball is curled across. Alonso heads it away, but only to Pepe, who stretches, takes possession again. He's had a good game, Pepe. Left footed ball into the box. That's headed up and away by James. Doesn't clear the penalty area. Bellerin nods it back in. Substitute Christiansen heads it away. The flag is up. And Chelsea have it half inside their own half. Pepe just bounces the ball away from the nearest Chelsea player. And time's running out. Chris Sutton, just over five minutes to go. Yep, and Arsenal have Chelsea exactly where they want them. Take them back in their own half. They've shown a lot of guts and resolve to get back into this. And in front, Arsenal, they really have. And here they come again, Arsenal and Ketia. Gives it back to Ceballos, he has a look, he shoots, but it's blocked by the, the back of Zuma on the edge of the penalty area, and it's out for a throw to Arsenal down here, who are throw it, slowing the game down. Lines must be open, Chris, for 6 or 6 one would assume. 08085-909-693, get in, uh, David Luiz has sat down on the halfway line, raised an eyebrow. Uh, hashtag BBC 606 on social media to make your point to Ali, Bruce Ball and Chris uh, get in touch 85058 on the text we'll have a stoppage while David Louise receives treatment and uh, so 606 later Chris while stocks last I must say the 606 programme with you and Ali has been such a the tremendously listenable 606 one of the best we've ever had one of the most listenable we've ever had so uh, uh, I hope listeners have enjoyed it as much as I have no, that's very kind he's a fiery little fella he at can times be. little Bruce and I wonder what he'll have to say yes I remember seeing him in a hotel reception uh, late one night when he when he demonstrated that but that's another story <laughs> for another time can you not share that? No, we're in the we're in the closing <laughs> stages of the cup final Is, here. Chris. Well, having drinks, John. We've, I think <laughs> we've got time. No, I don't think we have time. Uh, so, David Louise, is this a genuine injury, Chris, or? Uh, oh. Well, actually, knows? Socrates has uh, been yeah. called forward, so David Louise might not be able to finish this cup final against his former club, and Socrates indeed is uh, being brought forward. David Luiz will be disappointed that he's not able to see things out and celebrate on the pitch if it were to come to that. And there are less than four minutes of the 90 to play. David Luiz is able to walk off, running his fingers through all of that curly hair. Mikel Arteta greets him on the edge of the pitch. And um, Socrates has, has gone and walked away. And, um, and the referee, Anthony Taylor, has said, well, if you weren't ready to make the change... I'm going to make Arsenal take the throw. And Socrates wasn't. He'd wandered away up the touchline. So oh, odd referee, though, isn't it? <laughs> well, it is, but I suppose he's making the point. And Arsenal were wasting time. 2-1, Arsenal lead. David Luiz uh, now walks back onto the field. Uh, the ball is off the pitch. Well, I don't think David Luiz can do that. Uh, I mean, did he what? leave the pitch? Did he well, actually leave the pitch? Well, well, he did, didn't he? Now he's walked back on. I mean, well, he hooked Mikel Arteta. I know, I know they've been, I know they've been hard done by Chelsea, but it'd be really harsh for Arsenal to finish with 12 players. <laughs> <laughs> Here's the change. Then David Luiz replaced by Socrates. Arsenal 2, Chelsea 1, 5 Live and the World Service here at a sunny Wembley behind closed doors. Strangest of cup finals and two and a half minutes to play and Mikel Arteta just a matter of minutes away from finishing his first season I mean really he's only been in charge since December as uh, an FA Cup winner and indeed of course it would see Arsenal win a place in the Europa League for next season 
Chelsea haven't given this up yet. Christensen plays it forward. Things have conspired against Chelsea in, in quite a number of ways. Oh, absolutely. In this cup final, here's Jorginho. Uh, oh. Ross Barkley has, uh, has just caught and kept here in the centre circle. That's a yellow card for Barkley now. Free kick Arsenal. Yeah, once again, overran the ball. This one does look a bit nasty from Barkley. Yeah, heavy touch with his right foot. Oh, that is a nasty one. Just stretched into catches it. Him with his studs. If you're Chelsea, you're Frank Lampard. You're just saying, give me one, one more chance. A half chance from somewhere doesn't seem like it's going to happen, but that's wasteful. Mm. So holding. holding. Holding just blasted it downfield beyond anyone in a red and white shirt through the Caballero. And so Chelsea goes searching for the equaliser. Arsenal 2-1 up. Here is Zuma. Zuma four to the edge of the box. Abraham heads it back. It bounces off Tierney. It's rattling around on the edge of the Arsenal box, but it fell to the feet of Holding, who is able to clear away. But Chelsea come again. Chelsea you've got to be more urgent as that ball's on its way to Abraham. Pedro needs to get closer to him quicker. Tierney didn't deal with that brilliantly, but Arsenal scramble the ball, ball clear. James shrugs off the challenge that comes in on him from Maitland-Niles, continues to take it forward, Barkley is there, now here is Pedro, Pedro slips it forward, it actually ran off the shins of Chaka and ran th through to Martinez, who will drop down now and pick it up and uh, waste even just a couple of more seconds while Ross Barkley arrived and forced him to do that. Ball cleared downfield by Arsenal, Socrates, but that's tidied up by Zuma. Now back to Caballero, Christensen will bring it forward. Christensen looks up, Arsenal reversing into their own half. Long pass from Christensen out to the left-hand side, Alonso heads it infield. Pedro on his right foot, went for goal from distance, but that was blocked and charged down at source. And it will actually break for Arsenal to goal Aubameyang to take it towards the halfway line. I'm not sure if he kept it in over there. He did, but just gave possession back to Chelsea. And we are now into added time. This is it for Chelsea now, isn't it? They need somebody... One seven minutes, players, Chris. Yep. Seven well, minutes. They need one of their players to step up and show real courage. Jorginho swings a high pass to the left-hand side. Alonso. Alonso's away from Bellerin. Rolls the ball across, but it's blocked just a couple of yards away from him by Socrates. And it's out for a corner to Chelsea in yes. added time. Good advantage out for Chelsea. Bellerin got caught under the ball. Alonso, decent touch, took him away from Bellerin. We gave him a little tug back, but Chelsea win the corner. Hudson Adoy picks up the ball next to the advertising hoardings, places it in the quadrant. Chelsea have got lots of bodies inside the Arsenal box. Arsenal have got everyone back in there defending. Here's the delivery. Martinez on the stretch, and what a catch it was by the Arsenal goalkeeper falling away. And he's actually collided with a teammate of his, Tierney, and, uh, and has stayed down. Tierney's taken a bang in there as well. The uh, Arsenal medical people come racing on and referee Taylor is leaning over the Arsenal goalkeeper. So another stoppage here in added time with Arsenal leading by two goals to one. But back to the cricket and Nikesh Rugani. Yes, and England have just lost their fifth wicket in their pursuit of 213. Captain Owen Morgan gone for a duck, so there may just be a little twist in the tail. England now 137 for five and uh, they've got uh, 33 overs to bat still. Yeah, play still hasn't resumed here, Martinez. I think he's going to be uh, OK, just being helped to his feet now. So that should that should add another minute on. Brilliant goalkeeping. I tell you what, for a second-choice keeper, if you like, I think he's put, he's given Mikel Arteta a really good headache. Leapt, sprung like a leopard there, John, to grab that. Or a buzzard. <laughs> More on that later <laughs> in 6.06, .06, if you're intrigued. And Martinez is up, he's got the ball, he clears it away downfield. But that's been a hallmark, actually, of the way that goalkeeper Martinez has played since he's come into the team to replace the injured Leno. Arsenal defending, though, Pedro's got it down, racing, uh, diagonally out to the left-hand side, lifts the crossover, but Martinez takes that easily. That was uh, that was a piece of cake compared yeah, to the previous was, catch. That was an easy one. Too much height on the cross from Pedro, who actually was allowed to get the ball and turn and drive out left because Socrates 
put him under any pressure. It's all about seeing it through for Arsenal and Mikel Arteta. Boring, boring Arsenal will do. It will, but they've still got a few minutes because of all of that added time. Ceballos, oh, Ceballos stretches into the challenge. Jorginho, though, took it away from him. Jorginho still going back onto his right foot. Mikel Arteta is trying to direct things from the edge of the coaching area. Mikel Arteta, an FA Cup final winning captain with Arsenal, could be about to become an FA Cup final winning manager. But Chelsea with a cross from the right-hand side. Kenny gets up well and heads it away for Arsenal. It bounces down, and Nketiah and Aubameyang are running away, and Chelsea could be stretched. Although Nketiah plays it past Christensen and then runs into him and tried to win the free kick, and Anthony Taylor, the referee, was right there and was having none of it. Well, he's dived again. I have to say, he's fortunate not to see a yellow card. He's overhit the pass and just ran into Christensen, I think it was, but here's, here's Chelsea. Barkley playing it through the middle towards Alonso, then Pedro slips it forward. But, uh, Abraham on the chase, but it was just overhit by Pedro and Martinez, the goalkeeper, has it again. Oh, it was on, it was just weight of pass in a central area. The ball popped into Pedro, he knows. He's got a pained look on his face. Tried to slide the ball in behind, holding. And Abraham had made a really well-timed run, but too far, Martinez gathered. We're in the fifth minute of added time. There's going to be lots to discuss after this FA Cup final. Lots of incidents and uh, and some great moments as well. The Chelsea goal in the fifth minute from Pulisic was, uh, was a beautiful goal in itself. But lots of incident, injuries for Chelsea. Had to cope with injuries to Aspilicueta, who conceded the penalty controversially. Pulisic as well. Kovacic being sent off. So Chelsea again against Arsenal. Finishing an FA Cup final with 10 men, which isn't over yet. Here's Zuma who was beaten all ends up by Aubameyang for what, without question, even though Pulisic's was a fine goal, Aubameyang's was the goal of the final. And that one will be replayed time and time again if it's an FA Cup final winning goal, which it might be, although here's Pedro just outside the box to Alonso on the left-hand side. Alonso pulls it back to the edge of the area. Barkley onto his left foot, shoots, that's blocked. Bounces back to Ross Barkley, still got it. Red and white wall in front of him, plays it through off Ceballos. Pedro in the box, twisting and turning, still going. Oh, and Pepe it puts a, a challenge and kick. seemed to bundle over Pedro inside the D on the edge of the area. The referee says no free kick, but Chelsea have won it back from Pepe. And now Pedro again. Pedro goes through the challenge. Pedro into the box. The angle's tight. It's then the done. challenge comes in on Pedro, who is sent falling by Tierney. And the referee says no penalty. Arsenal have got it. Oh, a simulation again. He's dived. I think he, he feels the contact is going to come in, but he's thrown himself to the floor. They're just building a head of steam, Chelsea. See the initial challenge. Which was right on the edge of the penalty area from Pepe, yeah. and he did get the ball. And then he runs alongside Socrates, and, and he throws himself to the floor, Pedro. That was an act of desperation, Chris. Well, yeah, but, I mean, there, there's not a lot of difference between that and the Aubameyang penalty. Mm. I mean, that, that was blatant. That one, that one there. Both simulation. Pedro's still down, he's actually hurt himself. Uh, so we've got another stoppage. We are now in the seventh minute of added time. And there will be, uh, you would think, at least another couple of minutes to add on. Uh, more news from Southampton, Nikesh Rugani. Yeah, more drama here. Another wicket down for England. Moen Ali gone for a duck, just like his captain Owen Morgan before him. So uh, England in a spot of bother in their chase of 213. Now David Willey is at the crease. They need another 75 runs to win. Forget about the run rate. That's just 2.3 required from here on in. But they've only got four wickets in hand, England. Could be an exciting finish. Five live sports extra for the ball by ball commentary. Here, Arsenal lead Chelsea by two goals to one. Five live and the World Service. And Pedro still receiving treatment, Chris Sutton. Yes, he is. He's down in a, in a bit of pain, but trying to con the referee, I think, with that movement. Socrates. This isn't good for Frank Lampard. It looks as though it could be a shoulder injury. He, he did throw himself down, but it appears he might have landed on it awkwardly on his shoulder. Yeah, he's holding his right shoulder. And actually, you know, they're bringing the um, the oxygen mask forward for him. 
And uh, Frank Lampard has made the five changes that he can in normal time. So Chelsea will be down to nine men for the final seconds of this FA Cup final. And uh, in some ways, that sums it up for them. It, it has simply not been their day. It hasn't been their day. I think decisions have gone against them. Got to say, you have to give Arsenal credit for the resolve and the way they've battled back in this game. But the penalty for Arsenal, huge turning point in this contest. The second goal from Aubameyang, a moment of absolute genius, though. One of the great FA Cup goals, and just a pity there aren't fans in the stadium to see it. Yep, we'll watch that again for years and years. Pedro is still receiving treatment. I mean, goodness knows how long there will be to add on. We're now into the ninth minute of added time, but Pedro has got a, a problem with his right shoulder, and they're moving the stretcher alongside him, and uh, he will be placed on that. And I see that Arsenal are going to make uh, another change as well. Sead Kalasinac is going to come on as, uh, as Arsenal's third substitute. But the lines are open for 606 08 085 909 693. Uh, hashtag BBC 606 on social media. Text 85058. I think you're on until 9 o'clock with Ali Bruce Ball, Chris, tonight. Unless Chelsea get an equaliser and then we're on till I think 11.30. <laughs> That'll be after the highlights have started on t uh, 10.20 on BBC One. But don't worry, they're on at 9 o'clock in the morning as well, so you'll be able to see them then and as long as you're not still going with 606. The... Um, I wonder what Arsenal fans have got to say about this and Chelsea fans. This is such a big result, though, isn't it, for Mikel Arteta, if he does see it through. What a transformation at Arsenal Football Club. don't think anybody would have seen a trophy heading Arsenal's way. You think about how they started the season. A bit of a flaky team, soft and it's certainly a tougher game. Arsenal now. Yep, you and I, Emery, in charge. And then we had the, the little Freddie Ljungberg interlude before Mikel Arteta got the job. But it, it does feel, even though there have been setbacks, it does feel as though things are heading in the right direction. However, they did finish in eighth, which is uh, their lowest finish since the season that George Graham was sacked as the Arsenal manager back in 94-95. But they're having to wait a little longer for what would be this latest FA Cup success. That would be the 14th time they've won it. And incidentally, on the European front, it means that Arsenal would, as I say, qualify for next season's Europa League. They would go directly into the group stage. And um, in a little twist for Arsenal, that would mean Tottenham would enter in the second qualifying round, which begins on the 17th of September and uh, would involve them having to play in that, the third qualifying round, and a playoff before getting into the Europa League. Do you think Jose will be happy about that, John? I, I'm seeing his facial expression in my mind's eye. <laughs> Pedro has now been lifted onto the stretcher, and this is a really sad way for Pedro's Chelsea career to end, if that is the case. And uh, he, is, he is set, as Ian Dennis was saying, for this move to Roma. And uh, the shoulder injury that's forced him off means that Chelsea are playing the final moments with nine men in the FA Cup final. The ball played downfield, Christensen and Nketiah wrestling together, but it bounces through to Caballero. And uh, who knows how long there is to play. We're in the 11th minute of... We're in the 12th minute of added time. I would suspect there's still a couple of minutes to go. And the ball is played forward for Arsenal. It's uh, Granit Chaka who's going to get there first and take it towards the corner flag in the time-honoured style. Hudson Adoy is there. Hudson there's kicking another, away at the ball. There's another dive, isn't there, from Chaka? Chaka's gone down and the ball's out of play. Referee Taylor was right there and he's decided that all will result will be a throw-in to Chelsea. Kalasanac is coming on to replace Tierney. So another stoppage, and Tierney, where is he? Yeah, you might not believe this. Off. They have to go off at the, at on the, the nearest far side point. of the pitch. Yes, he managed to manoeuvre himself away over onto the far side of the field, but referee Taylor was wise to that and says, you can just walk off over there. So uh, Kalasinac is on for the final seconds. That's a shame, isn't it, for Kieran Tierney? 
He has been really grown in an Arsenal shirt, got himself up to full fitness, is walking round where it would be the Arsenal fans who would be giving him a rapturous reception. 13th minute of added time. Arsenal leading Chelsea by two goals to one. Seconds away from winning yet another FA Cup final. And it is Arsenal who are coming forward. Chelsea need to get the ball back. And um, Nketiah was nudged over, but that is it. There is the final whistle, and Mikel Arteta down on the edge of the pitch is mobbed by his staff. Frank Lampard comes across and offers his hand, and Mikel Arteta races out onto the pitch to celebrate with his Arsenal players. Mikel Arteta has now won the FA Cup as an Arsenal captain and as a manager, and he has done it in only his 28th match as the head coach of Arsenal Football Club. 2-1 they've won against Chelsea, things really conspired against Frank Lampard's team, but the record winners of the FA Cup have done it again, 14 times now they will have lifted this trophy, and uh, Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang was the match winner, will it be his last match for Arsenal? Only time will tell, but he, if it is, he made a big mark, particularly with that winning goal. Oh, absolutely, John. Genius of a winning goal from Aubameyang. Will he stay? Won't he stay at Arsenal? I don't think any Arsenal players will be thinking about that at this moment in time. Mikel Arteta has been absolutely brilliant, like a little matador in his technical area. Changed the game with the first drinks break. Arsenal came out with real intent, got fortunate with the penalty decision. But the second goal, absolutely brilliant, worthy of winning any cup final. But Frank Lampard, on the other hand, uh, he'll be feeling bitterly disappointed. Things did conspire against them with the penalty decision and the sending off, which was really, really harsh on uh, on Kovacic and Chelsea. But Arsenal go on, and it's a, another famous cup win for Arsenal. Yeah, not to mention the injuries too that Chelsea suffered. And their players are leaving the pitch now with heads bowed. They're already constructing the stage. The presentation will be on the pitch. But Arsenal have won it. First time one club has beaten another club three times in FA Cup finals. Arsenal three times winners against Chelsea in the final. 14 times winners in all. After a final score here at Wembley of Arsenal 2, Chelsea 1. Good to know that even in a stadium with no fans, Sweet Caroline is being played to entertain the uh, empty seats. Um, the first things first here, Dion Dublin, I'll come to you first, which is there's going to be a whole load of debate over, over Kovacic's Sekiela card, which we'll come to, but the important thing is Aubameyang's second goal was a goal worthy to win any cup final, as Chris said. It was uh, outstanding. Absolutely outstanding. Cool as a cucumber, did all the hard work, nice little drag back onto his left and, and never looked in doubt. And some of the runs he makes, being this close to um, a player like that, watching the way he moves and his runs and his, his dictating where he's going to tell, tell the players to put the ball was, was an absolute pleasure. I've got to point out one thing because as soon as the final whistle went, all the Arsenal players are hugging and they're getting together and David Luiz went over to the Chelsea bench and he was slapping hands with all the Chelsea players, all the Chelsea staff. And when he slapped hands with everybody in blue in that dugout, that's when he went over the white line back onto the pitch to celebrate. And he's actually just coming away from the, uh, the referee and, uh, and the linesman now. So a bit of class from David Luiz. Fair enough so. Um, and, and Rob Green, Chris mentioned there as well in, in how he summed up. From the first drink, drinks break on, Arsenal were probably the deserved winners, weren't they? You'd have to say so, yeah, and you look at it and you look at Michael Arteta and it's kind of summed up the season, hasn't it? He, he's faced a load of problems, addressed them and overcome them. In this game, they didn't look like they had an answer to anything after 10, 15 minutes. They faced up to it, they changed the game a little bit, addressed the problem and won the game. They overcame it and that shows the brilliance of him and also the brilliance of the team that he now has together as this unit. And like you say, yeah, I, I don't think Chelsea did the same after that they didn't have that same response no they didn't respond did they chris no they, they didn't and, and you have to you have to credit arsenal um, and Mikel arteta for the changes he made that greater impetus after the drinks break what i would say though honestly if you're frank lampard i think you're furious with that penalty decision that that changed the game albeit arsenal had gone up a gear or two it did change the game
I, and I have to say, I thought it was an appalling decision. And what, whatever you say about the game, Chelsea very, very hard done by. But but the winning goal was absolutely breathtaking. I think. You, I, it, sorry, I was going. Do you not think you're more furious about this, that second yellow card? I mean, which just well, well, is, both, I mean, the penalty nonsense. changes the game. Yes, Mark. I know. The, the penalty absolutely changes the game. And they were hard done by. And you know, Aubameyang will be getting all the praise in the world. He will, but that simulation. He, he's bought that penalty. That that's cheating, and there was too much of that. And I have to say, disappointed with the Arsenal players, because with the second yellow for Kovacic, they were the ones who got in the referee's heads, and, and actually got him sent off. And Mikel Arteta, albeit animated all afternoon, he was out of his technical area. So I don't think the Arsenal players covered themselves in glory well, at that moment. There are two things there that you could argue that most players behave like that in all squads couldn't you and secondly are we saying you... it's right are we saying no I'm, that no, that no, I'm most okay? definitely not saying it's right and secondly a referee ought to be strong enough to be able to deal with totally. a load of players moaning yeah. that someone should get a second yellow card and and the VAR will say well you can't look at a yellow card because then you'd be changing things Rob they'll say you can't look at a second yellow card because you don't look at the first yellow cards and all the yellow cards are meant to be equal but that that in many ways Rob the neutral have any chance of a comeback really in that last 20 minutes yeah Arsenal were co- I, I think even before the second goal Arsenal looked comfortable they sort of reverted back to the system that they've deployed against Manchester City sitting deep hitting them on the break and that worked wonderfully for the second goal and, and Chris has described it perfectly in, the, in, the, in, it, in it, you're right it is a good enough goal to win any cup final on another pack with VAR Martinez Arsenal goalkeeper yeah. was, was uh, I mean if it's not on the line, it's over the line for being handballed. Now, that is a red card. And so I, I don't know where VAR comes in with this, but it, but I've seen the, the, the stilled images on social media, and he's outside the box, and the ball well, is why also... Why didn't they out. check it, Rob? Well, this well, is it. Where does VAR come in? That's a huge moment. They did, apparently. Wow, did they? It, it, well, I think they were... Like, uh, 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 on the TV, they were saying they were looking at it. OK, well, but at the same time, with VAR... On that, with the offsides, you have a definitive line. Surely, with a penalty area, you have a definitive line, and you're saying well, it shows. Well, Rob, how he... can they, Rob, how can they get it wrong? I don't, I don't understand. If there's people that can see oh. from so many different angles, how oh. do they get it wrong? Because they do. <laughs> because I, honestly, they're human. I, I said earlier on Five Live Sports. Yeah, but it's I'm not human making of, a decision. I'm decision, watching a lot it? of NRL at the moment. By God, they get things wrong in every single game. In that, when they go to when they go to the bunker, people still get it wrong, Dion. It's not foolproof. No, but it's not is... foolproof, but if there's obvious mistakes to be made, and judging by the sounds of the two lads, he was outside his box. Well, I, I, I'm, we're, we're miles away where we are, myself and John. His feet were definitely outside, and and the assistant on the far side was in a really good position. But said earlier, you can imagine Stockley Park. The old, as, that was heart attack material, wasn't it, for the guy at Stockley <laughs> Park sitting there thinking, blimey, please, <laughs> let's not have a contentious one. <laughs> um... Just one more on the general sort of officiating and the, the, everything around the game. Is John Murray still there? Is he talking yes. to me? I don't know. I'm just um, waiting for the What do, uh, what do we get to in the end? For 14, 14 minutes, 13 minutes of stoppage time? Something like that? It was, yeah, I think we're into the 14th. I mean, we, we, can't, we can't keep going on with drinks, breaks, five subs, this, that and the other, can we? Well, we're certainly going to for next season. You know, that's that's being decided. I think we're going to. I think we're going to have the presentation, Mark, which is oh, that, uh, which will please you because they're not wasting means, time over that. No, crack on with it then. Are you going to commentate on it? And then you don't have to answer my question. Well, Pierre Emerick Aubameyang has uh, just delivered a, a television interview, and the rest of his teammates were waiting for the captain, the man who scored the two goals in this final. The first from the penalty spot after he himself won the penalty and he has joined his teammates there in the corner and I mean what a what a surreal scene this is we're about to see the trophy be picked up not presented here at Wembley Stadium behind closed doors and uh, the Arsenal players will gather around I saw a man in a black suit with white gloves wearing a black face covering just quietly walk across and place the FA Cup on a plinth which is over there in the end to our left and the Arsenal players having celebrated are all now walking past the FA Cup and onto the stage 
which has an arch on it, a blue arch, which has the title, this one-off title, the Heads Up FA Cup Final, written on it. And the Arsenal players are going to position themselves on the stage and wait for Pierre Emerick Aubameyang to bring the cup across to them. They're all filing past first the cup on its plinth and then a sort of desk, a high desk, which has got the, the winner's medals on it and they're picking up their own medals and handing them around to one another. In fact, Serd Kolasinac has been the man who's been handing them around, his teammates. And now they're gathered. Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang is standing just a few yards away from the FA Cup and he walks across and he stands next to the trophy. We will have to see what the future holds for Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang but he has gone out on a massive high in the FA Cup, if indeed he is to leave, having scored both goals in the semi-final against Manchester City and both goals here in the final. And Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang, the Arsenal captain, lifts the FA Cup from the plinth. He has it in his hands. He does not raise it yet. He walks across in front of his celebrating teammates and actually just allows it to topple onto the ground and then in mock shock, just checks to see that it's okay he did mean to do that it's a little funny joke but now the cup is raised the FA Cup goes up in the hands of the Arsenal captain Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang there are flames in front of the empty stands of Wembley Stadium and there is golden ticker tape as well which is fired into the skies and there is no one here 90,000 empty seats with no one watching inside the stadium no spectators no fans but they'll all be watching around the world as Arsenal lift the FA Cup for a record 14th time and indeed for four times in the last seven seasons that Arsenal have won this great competition. Serial winners under Arsene Wenger and Mikel Arteta was talking in advance of this final about how he regularly speaks and keeps in touch with that great Arsenal manager for two decades and more well, now, Mikel Arteta is an FA Cup final winning manager, and he just walked away on his own, actually, behind the celebrations, but he will be a proud, proud man. FA Cup won by Arsenal, and, uh, and the, Chelsea, the Chelsea contingent just watching from afar this, this unusual presentation. No losers medals, no VIPs, no royalty. Arsenal have done it all themselves and they are winners of the FA Cup in 2020. How important today is for Arsenal, their manager, and the future of the football club. Were you asking me that, Mark? Sorry. No, I was asking Dee on that, but he may have Sorry. gone. No, I'm here, pal, I'm here. All right, there I'm you here. go. I said, only, Sorry, time, uh, only time will tell. Sorry, yeah, listen, I, I, I think... I think um, He's the right man for the job. I just think he, he fits and the players seem to have reacted to him, you know, not just today, but, you know, yes, they've been a bit hit and miss and they haven't got themselves, um, Europe, they didn't get themselves European football for, through their position, but I think everybody's on board with him and I think it's the right fit for a club like Arsenal. The players there celebrating in the background, they all went over to the manager, gave him a big hug, so I think the respect's there as well and I, I'll say it again, Chappers, I've given David Luiz a hard time throughout the season. But being this close to the pitch and seeing what he says and, and how he helps out, he's helping out Holding and helping out Tierney, telling them where to go, and just pointing and making sure everything's right, I can see now how important he is to Arteta. Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang got both of the goals. He lifted the trophy before he did that. He spoke to Dan Walker. Let's speak to Mr. Aubameyang here. Thank you. Two goals in the semi-final, two goals in the final. What is it about this competition? Yeah, I think we, we enjoy it today. We just enjoy it and we are all happy, as you see. Emi is crying. That's, that shows that he's uh, really implicated in, the, in this game and in this trophy, so we are all happy. What does this say about what your manager has done? After a difficult season, nobody's happy with the league position, and yet you have secured European football for next season with this win today. Yes, I think uh, he deserves this win. Uh, I think he, he did a great job, and uh, we are all happy to, to have him 
on board and we just follow it. We know you've got to go. We've got two quick questions for you. Yes. Your second goal in particular, yes. great finish. Yes. Ian Wright was just behind the goal there. He loved it. Yes. I'm sure the Arsenal <laughs> fans loved it watching as well. Right what was it like from your perspective? Yeah, it was uh, right here in the 90s. <laughs> no, I think uh, Zuma know me well. I know I'm right-footed, but so that's why I said, OK, I'll go on the left. Yes, that's it. Ian Wright's a big Arsenal fan. There's lots watching at home as well. They all want to know about your future. What can you tell us about you and Arsenal? Nothing. Just today, trophy. That's Enjoy it. the celebration. Thank you. <laughs> Pierre Emerick Aubameyang uh, with Dan Walker. We'll bring you more reaction throughout the evening. Uh, Rob and Dion, thank you. Also, thank you uh, to Chris. I'm sure Arsenal and Chelsea fans, you will want to have your say throughout the evening. Uh, now with Chris and alongside him, Ali. Thank you, Mark. Yes, I think that's quite a good FA Cup final to do the uh, the phoning off the back of. If you're still there, Mark, can I just check one thing with you that you said around about half time that if a team gets a penalty given against them, it's a bad thing and they're annoyed. <laughs> and if you get one given for you, that's good news. Is that right? Can't argue with that, can you? I Lovely. mean, you know, that's 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 top level top level analysis. Wise words. Thank you very much <laughs> indeed, Mark. Top show. Really enjoyed the Cup final on Five Live this afternoon. Plenty more. Reaction to come as well here on 606. Chris.